What's up, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti, and these are my hands. We're gonna um, just work on quads the whole time today. I am not feeling super great. It's not flu related, it is brain related. Um, and that's okay. I'm going to do my absolute best. And uh, yeah, we'll hang out for a little while. I just found this little guy on the bench, which means that it has broken off of something. So I've been working on two rigs, the uh, Acrobat Duo, and I changed the uh, the canopy and the frame out on my newbie drone uh, Tiny Whoop, Acrobee, Acrobee Brushless, rather. So it's from one of the two. Um, yeah, so we'll inspect everything and see if we can find where this little guy came from. And then you guys will get to see me get angry and possibly scream. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started on that. Uh, first and foremost, let's see who's in the chat. We've got a little bit of Big Willie FPV, IMAX, John Dyson, Justin Cawie, Ken Hill, King Sloth, Remy Tim, and the one and only Supercell FPV. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for coming. Uh, the world is in lockdown, but that's okay. We will fix some quads. Uh, not a voltage regulator, Techno. Um, I don't know what it is. Usually voltage regulators are quite a bit bigger and they're gray and they'll usually have a, uh, a number written on top. Um, at tag in the chat, if you want me to read your comment, just make sure you do at CIDFPV. That'll light your comment up in orange for me. Um, or if you're feeling generous, you can do a super chat and I'll definitely... Uh, read your comment and show you some love. Uh, it does have three legs. Oh my god, Big Willie's uh, kid's school just got closed for the next six weeks. That's outrageous. Tweet FPV is here. What's going on, Tweet? Hey, speaking of Tweet FPV, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, then you haven't been paying attention to my Instagram. So shame on you. Or my Facebook, I should say. I think I've got pictures on both. Um, but I've got the Tweet grips on and they look fantastic i have two more sets that i need to um take pictures of uh the the like straight purple and then the purple blue color change uh and then these are the grizzly uh it's actually black grip tape with uh purple and red sparkles in it uh and this is my favorite and yeah got that done and i got these uh brain fpv stickers all over it too which came out way better than I thought. I'm super happy with it. Um, I had a blast trying to figure out where I could fit these stickers. The The QX7 has like very small little flat areas where you can put stickers, um, so it makes putting stickers on kind of difficult. But it was a fun little game of uh, where can I fit these stickers. So super happy with how this turned out. Um, I probably won't do much more to this transmitter because it just looks so damn good. So there we go. Um, yeah, head over to, uh, or hit up Tweet FPV if you want some of these grips. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll take care of you. They're on his Etsy channel, but just message him uh, because he'll make a dollar or two extra if you do that. Oh, no way, Tweet. Okay, so Tweet found the same purple glitter uh, from Black Diamond. Black Diamond has the best adhesive that he's found uh, without any text, and they're on the way. So just to remind you guys, and there will be, um, I will have some pictures of these soon-ish. Um, if you hit Ciotti FPV over on uh, Facebook, you'll get to see what I've been doing photography of. But this is the next photography project. So here are the other two options that he's got right now. This is just the straight up purple um, from Black-ish Diamond, maybe. Uh, no like sparklies or anything, but it looks really cool. It's just like a good solid purple. And then this one, um, I know he's got a piece of. This is a purple to blue color change. It does not show up properly unless you're outside. It only really shows the blue inside. Uh, but it shifts to purple at different angles, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, he's got these colors that are going to be cut out as the purple and red glitter run out. And yeah. 
That's the CID FPV Super Special Edition Limited Run Purple Grip Tape Jam. If you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, I see a bunch of orange. What do we got? Uh, ben Watkins, are uh, you going Brain FPV for the flight control? I've been trying to figure out how to wire one up, uh, but their BEC is only 500 milliamps. So, uh, good question, Ben. I actually have had, um, I've had both the 20 by 20 and the 30 by 30 Brain FPV flight controllers for a while now. Um, the 20 by 20 blew up on a really vicious crash. Uh, and the 30 by 30 is in my dolphin long ish range rig and it's been okay. Um, they, they, uh, so they did some testing over on the black box beta flight group and the Bosch gyros didn't really do better than the, um, MPU 6000. So my will to stick with the, um, with the brain FPV stuff kind of went away, um, especially because it's a little expensive. So that's kind of a shame. Their, their gear is made beautifully, and that is a better gyro, but basically what the testing, and, and who knows, I mean, you know, the, this is just, this isn't fact, but I trust those guys a lot. Um, basically, it's a great gyro, but it's just not, super well suited in their opinion to quads because of the way the um it's missing it has less hardware filtering uh than the mpu 6000 and that hardware filtering is faster than the software filtering even though that technically shouldn't be um the tests that they've done uh have shown that so oh and it looks like i found it right here so that's just terrific all right so this Runcam hybrid board is dead. Well, maybe not dead, but it probably won't work because it's missing that little guy. So I'll try to get that back on there. Uh, I probably won't have great luck doing that. That probably happened when I was... Um, so you got to be really, really careful when you're taking on and or... Um, screwing off the uh, the little nutties with these the, the the these component manufacturers are trying to cram so much on these 20 by this is mainly a problem with 20 by 20 boards but um, they're trying to cram so much shit on these boards that they tend to get some of these taller components a little too close to the um, to the to the 20 by 20 holes and then what happened here and has happened to me before is when you're tightening or loosening your little nuts on the top, um, your wrench or whatever you're using to tighten it, pair of pliers, you can just rip a component right off. And it looks like that's what I did. So that sucks. Yeah, see how close that is when the nut's there? So I probably had put, um, I'd probably put these pliers on this nut to tighten it up. And when I rotated, I just ripped that component right off. It doesn't look like I ripped the pads off, um, so it might solder back on just okay. You know what I'll probably do? Um, I don't think I'll be able to do this with a soldering iron without making a whole mess in here. Um, but a new friend of mine, Seneca, has a uh, hot air station. So I'll probably ask him to uh, hot air gun this, see if he can hot air this back on there. Um, so I will put this aside because we are not going to use it in fear of that being an important little uh, black chip guy. Um, man, that's, that's annoying, but not the end of the world. So, that's weird. I didn't notice that about the other one. Interesting. They have different processors on them. Eh, whatever. All right, so luckily... Um, I have more than one of these hybrids, so we can keep going on this build. I can't believe I found that so quickly. Um, that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, Techno says they're not hard to solder. Use replacement. Just use the thinnest tip. Ugh, I've had bad luck doing that. Uh, and I also would love an excuse for to invite Seneca over to hang out. So <laughs> we'll see. He's got kids, so who knows if he'll have the time. But uh, and a and a really interesting job. 
But yeah, we'll see. Uh, if if he can't come and hang though, or if, if he doesn't have time to fix it, I will definitely get in there with a tiny little soldering tip and see what I can do. Uh, but in the interim, we'll just switch over to this one. Uh, all right. So, what else did I want to cover? Oh yeah, down in the uh, down in the description, there's all kinds of stuff for you guys to click. Um, Discord uh, a link to the Discord channel that I always forget to go on. But I did remember to go on the other day. Uh, link to the Patreon if you want to support me and or get in on the weekly giveaways. Every Monday there are four giveaways. And, I don't know, other fun stuff. Affiliate links, um, if you're ordering on Amazon or GetFPV or Banggood, if you click one of my affiliate links, it will give me credit for your entire order, even if it's not that item. And uh, I'll have some more money to put back into the hobby here and do more testing and giveaways and all that fun stuff. Uh, there's even a link to GetFPV. They're doing $50 gift cards for this will be the last month, uh, unless a lot of you guys click on that little button to go to their website. So it's down in the description and you just have to click the button to trigger their um, uh, tracking that you know my people are going to the website and it's worth it for them to do $50 gift cards. So yeah, there's that. Um, tweet FPV, Stan FPV, those are my two uh, current Awesome vendors I'm talking to a bunch, uh, as well as Tiny's LEDs. Um, Tiny's LEDs sent me a humongous... Look at this, guys. Hold on. Uh, they, this isn't even all of them, but they uh, they sent me a huge amount of free stuff for giveaways. So we're going to have lots and lots and lots of awesome uh, LEDs for giveaways coming up. Huge shout out to Tiny's LEDs for doing this. I... I just basically told, I was doing an order from them, and I explained, you know, the stream and how awesome you guys are, and um, he said, what do, you, what do you want me to send? I'm in. And I said, look, you know, whatever, like, you can't, whatever you have a lot of, right, like, whatever um, would, uh, you're having trouble moving, or just people aren't buying as much, and yeah, I guess uh, that was a bunch of stuff here, so that's super cool. A lot of yellow, it's interesting, there's a lot of yellow um, LEDs in here, so I guess people don't love yellow LEDs, uh, and a bunch of UV, which, uh, or purple, which, uh, you guys know I'm a big fan of, so we will, yeah, as Billy says, we will light up the world in, in LA Lakers colors. Ugh. All right, so let's, uh, let's start fixing some stuff here. I don't, I don't think there's anything else super, uh, Super important for me to drone on about. Let's just dig in and start fixing stuff. Uh, fire away with those questions at Ciotti FPV so it shows up in orange or super chat, and I will definitely see you. Uh, I am gonna be. I, I do need to get this done, and I don't know if I have any working rigs right now, so I do need to get a bunch of repairing done. Uh, so I won't be staring at the chat, but if you guys light my name up in orange, I will see it. So, okay, so the problems that we ran into that I just kind of gave up on <laughs> on last week's stream um, were that by putting the, oh, it would help if I push this down, eh? Uh, by putting the capacitor here, I lost my flat surface that I was going to mount the receiver and the, um, the VTX to. So that's kind of annoying. I have to troubleshoot that. Uh, I can't just move them backwards, A, because I cut the goddamn wires too short, uh, but B, because when you move them backwards farther, they start to get too close to uh, this rear standoff, and I really wanted to use these last set of holes uh, for a zip tie to hold this whole little communication package down. Um, if I go farther back, all I'll have is these two... Circle, so you can't run a zip tie around here because of the clean, dirty setup. It'll hit it. Um, and then the only other option would be to go front to rear here. And then I'd have to turn these guys sideways. And then I don't know if they would fit. Whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure what I want to do. I could build a little platform. Um, I could totally build a little platform and just put it up on there. So basically, if I get a couple standoffs, um, I can put this little nice little board up here. The only worry there is, um, is the, the corner of this plate going to come down and clip it? Which 
I don't think it will. I, th I think it'll be okay. And then these guys will be centered in here. And yeah, that should be totally fine. But then the other problem is there's another standoff up here. And I don't want this other standoff to to come down and, and interfere. So it's kind of an interesting packaging problem that, that we've got going on here. Um, all because of putting this uh, this capacitor down here. And that might be how I solve this. I, I might actually remove the capacitor, even though it it's just looks so perfect in there. Um, I don't. I also don't love that it hangs out the bottom like this. Like I am gonna have these little fetuses on here, um, so in theory this won't be the lowest point. But if I straddle something or something like that, if you know, if if I'm, I don't know, if if I straddle something right down the middle, technically this could slam against it, and that's not good. You never want your capacitors to get bashed against stuff so I have a feeling I might actually just take this capacitor out of here and maybe move it back um, maybe move it back here or something like that or um, I don't know there's a number of different things that I could do I'm just trying to weigh out which packaging solution will be the best and I'm leaning towards moving that cap um, I could technically also move the cap to the front um, the thought process there being that the other issue I was having is that um, with the with the ESC and flight controller stack in the middle set of holes, so there the way that the duo is set up, there's a middle set of twenty by twenty holes here. Um, give you guys a little bit better of a view. Uh, yeah, so there's a middle set that you kind of have to use, and then the front and back sets do have adjustments. Um, I'm using such a big ESC because it's the only 6S 20x20 ESC I had and there aren't really many 20x20 6S ESCs. Um, I'm using such a big one that the front of the ESC hangs out so far um, that it's getting in the way of the uh, of the Runcam hybrid board and you can see I have the Runcam hybrid mounted as far forward as I can on this triple set. Um, this center set you can't move it like it looks like you might be able to move the back ones here but then where are the front ones going to go, right? Like there's, it's not drilled um, for the front ones either. I'm tempted to say that I wish Tommy had just drilled a line of holes over the whole damn thing, but that would weaken, that would more than likely weaken this center area so much that you wouldn't really want that, especially because of the fact that the carbon fibers are going in the diagonal direction. Um, the, the quick and easy thing to remember about these carbon fibers is that the longer they are, the stronger they are, and it really makes a big difference. So if he were to run a set of holes down the middle here, these carbon fibers running, like so so this one, for example, right here, right? This is a very weak strand of carbon fiber because it gets intersected by the hole. So if he had that going on all the way down the middle here, the, the center section would probably become a little bit weak. Um, so, and, and yeah, it, it makes sense to just have your 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 center stack absolutely dead center and not really give adjustment to it the 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 solution would be to not use this uh, the best solution would be to not use this ESC um, this is an ESC meant for five inch rigs um, there's no reason to have an ESC this big in a micro um, but it's what I had it's already installed it's already wired so I'm gonna leave it and we will find another way uh, so while I've been saying that, I've decided that yes, this this capacitor has to go, which of course means that I have to pull this off. So that's fine. Let's get that done. Uh, what are you guys talking about in the chat? Uh, Mark Emerson bought a 16 by 16 stack by mistake. Um, have you got any recommendations on a frame to put it in? So 16 by I I would actually recommend returning it because I I had a man I got that Mamba 16 by 16 stack and it was a real pain in the ass. Um, and then it got run over by a car. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would actually return it. Most of these places' return policies are pretty damn good, um, especially if it's unopened. Uh, if you absolutely can't return it, uh, I would look for like a toothpick frame, actually. I, I, I wonder if Bob's frame has 16. Hold on, let me see. Let me see if Bob's uh, TP3 frame has 16 by 16 mounting. Hold on one second. <clears throat> And I don't think it does. 
I don't think it does. Mm, pretty sure it doesn't. Uh, so, uh, one frame that I know for a fact does is the Wii Mix by Rotorius. That is a super interesting frame that you can build um, motors up or motors uh, motors above the frame or mo wait no not below. You can build it with the stack above the frame base plate or the stack below the frame base plate. Super cool little frame. Um, it's basically a toothpick frame that's pushing the camera forward instead of putting it on top. Um, so that would be a good one. Uh, other than that, I don't really know many other. I'm I'm still uh, I'm still like. Uh, toothpick frame knowledge challenged, I guess we could say. So I don't have a ton of recommendations for you, but yeah, I think you're going to want a toothpick frame for that. I think that's going to be the uh, the right choice. Uh, which one you get is going to be on you because I, like I said, need to learn more before I give. I try not to give recommendations of just like stuff that I haven't flown that random people on the internet have said, it's good. Because I don't know if it's their first quad or not. And nobody really divulges that information, unfortunately. Uh, which is a lesson to us all. If you're going to make a, a recommendation on the internet to someone else, type a little bit more. Type, uh, I've had three of these frames and they're good. Or this is my first quad and I think it's good. Stuff like that, you know. That's, that's important for people to read. Um, it's very easy to just say, yes, get this or yes, get that. And most new people will just assume that you know what you're talking about, but uh, that can lead to people buying the wrong thing. So say more. <laughs> uh, all right, hold on, I gotta reach. Oh Christ! Yeah, Mark, you got it, brother. Uh, Puffy, which 6S lipo will you use? I have two right now. I have a. Um, uh, I have a. GNB 6S 550, I want to say, and I actually don't, I forget which they are. Well, the the two that I got um, are not the lightest. The the one I'm probably going to end up going for is uh, Talon and uh, China Hobby Line. Both have 6S 450s, um, and that is roughly the same, well, no, it is exactly the same total milliamp hours as a 6s 450 which is the battery that i run on my 4s v1 acro brat uh so yeah those are the ones that i'm going to go with i was doing an order and somebody else had um a 550 6s that i just snagged just to have something um so yeah that's what i'll be going with very excited about that uh, I'm, I'm super curious as to if there's going to be any actual improvement um, with a 6S battery on a mic on a 3 inch rig versus 4S. Uh, my punch is it'll be minimal, but I can't wait to find out for sure. I thought I could kind of go in dry here because I put so much flux on there, but it doesn't look like it. So we'll just get a little bit of solder going. I've been on this pad for a while. Let's try to get up off of it. Nope, not ready yet. Almost, almost, almost. Come on, buddy. Move these around. And come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off. Yeah, it's starting to come, but it's not quite there. And I've been on that pad for a long time. So let's give it a second to cool down. Let's see what's going on. Okay. So I need to put more heat. I need to get my tip down like this to get more heat on this side. That's where it's not wanting to uh, flow through. If I had a half decent soldering iron, this wouldn't be an issue. But as I've realized recently, my soldering iron is old and moldy. Um, it's probably 15 years old. Um, Thomas Bird says the RDQ 556S is good. Nice. I think that might be. I think that's what I've got. Um, it's just a little too heavy. Uh, do, 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 do. Brent says, did you get an email or show shipped on the my, oh, I guess you guys are talking about the order that was placed. Um, I think I saw another one. Thomas Bird says, what ESC is that? Uh, this is a, a, the Akon 
35 amp <clears throat> uh, AK AK 30 to what is it AK 32 35 amp 20 by 20 um what if you mount the cap on the battery lead Ben Watkins says so here are my thought <coughs> here are my thoughts on that um I've done that before I've put caps on the battery leads before what uh so the the rig that got stuck on top of the crane uh that I had to climb the crane to get back that rig was one of the first times I'd ever put a capacitor on the battery lead. And what happens is when it slammed um, on top of the crane, there was so much weight on the battery lead that it unplugged. And that was one of the reasons I couldn't find it. Like I almost left it up there because I didn't, I couldn't find it. Um, so I will never do that again. I will never put a capacitor on a battery lead again. Um, the other reason is I like to run uh, the the battery strap over the connectors to just further kind of hold them together. And when you have the capacitor here, it makes it really hard to do that. Um, so yeah, that's my philosophy there. I do not put any more weight than I need to on the battery lead because having a battery lead unplug is one of the easiest ways to lose a rig. So there you go. There's some uh, opinion for you guys on that one. And it's also been, I want to say proven, but uh, I'll say debunked, because I don't know if it's actually been proven, but um, people much smarter than me with electronics have said that uh, having it really close to the pads, really close to the lead, doesn't make a difference. You can run little wires to it with absolutely no problem whatsoever. So there's no performance advantage having it on the, uh, on the battery lead. All right, let's try this again. And I'm going to get the heat on the side here where we were having trouble. And I can already feel it's the heat's kind of penetrating a lot better this time. So you guys probably can't see much because I'm in my own light. But let's get this going here. Oh, for Christ's sakes. All right, and I'm just going to move this around a little bit just to try to float. There we go. Now we're talking. All right, cool. So we got that one, and then the uh, the positive won't be an issue because it's not hooked up to a huge ground pad. So we should have this off in but a second. Um, I try not to move the soldering iron tip around a lot because the um, the the copper pads themselves are only really adhesived down so if you move the tip of the soldering iron around a lot you can just kind of once it's hot that glue is going to become malleable as glue does um, and if you're moving stuff all around it's a it's a good way to kind of weaken that up and weaken the glue up on that uh, on that pad and then down the road potentially lift the pad so try not to move the soldering tip around a lot but there is um, there's a balance of the other option just now would have been to just keep pouring heat into that pad uh, which in the grand scheme of things could be worse than what I was doing there uh, in my mind at least and in my experience I should say so let's undo all this beautiful uh, shrink wrap that we did here because now we need to put a longer lead on this thing of course why would anything that I do cleanly and nicely uh, be able to stay on something for more than a day or two or, you know, even just until it gets in the air? Eh. Ow! Stab myself for a second here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get off, get off, get off, get off. It's starting to come. Uh, I can't believe I just said that out loud. Why on earth would you type that? Daniel Maurer. I trust the things that you type, Daniel. Don't make me say bad things. <laughs> Just kidding. Make me say bad things. Uh, all right. Get over here. Man, I really shrink this down hard. Uh, Puffy says he's got the cap mounted in the hole and the Rush 20, 20 by 20 with Mike on top of it. Oh, so you put it in the hole, huh? This one won't fit in the hole. That's what... She said, yeah, this, uh, this 330 capacitor won't fit in the hole. And since it's 6S, I'm like, I'm a little freaked out 
with this only being a, a 330 as it is, but apparently these 330s are all that's really needed on uh, five inch mini quads. So from what I've read, this will be absolutely fine. But yeah, I don't know, it's still kinda freaky. But it's a micro, micro motors, micro batteries. Uh, it shouldn't hammer the electrical system in theory as bad as a 6S 5 inch rig with a zillion grams of thrust and huge back spikes. So there we go. Um, now we get to redo this. I'm just gonna put longer. Oh no, the square hole. Oh, cool. Okay. All right, square hole. Got it. Uh, now I need to find. I just threw away. I wonder why they were out. Hey, there they are. All right, cool. I got two uh, chopped off battery leads, or not battery leads, uh, motor leads from a 5S rig, which I want to, or a 6S rig, 5 inch rig, Jesus Christ, which are, yep, there they are, 20. A W G. So we will use these. I'm just going to solder these directly on full length and then we'll figure out how short they need to be. All right. 330 worked fine, been running on 6S 5 inch for months now. Awesome. Good to hear that. I have heard that before, but every single person that says it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about doing it. In the future, I would maybe like to switch my 5-inch rigs over from the 1,000s just because they're unnecessarily big, um, but I don't know. I don't know. Still kind of freaky, and uh, having a bigger cap than necessary is never going to be a bad thing, so I'll probably just leave them out of sheer, unadulterated laziness. Okay, so let's get these guys tinned and tacked on there, and then we can figure out where everything else is going to go. Well, where this capacitor is going to go. I, I pretty much know where everything is going to go in this setup. I, I am going to need to raise the, uh, the Runcam hybrid board up a bunch to clear the... Um, to clear the front of the ESC, which you guys, if you were here last time, you would have seen that. If you weren't here last time, you'll see it in a minute because that's gonna be, I'm gonna figure that out, I think, before I do this. And that's great, just fall down. This one's gonna fall now too, ready? One, two, three, fall. And this is me being lazy and sloppy and not doing things the right way, but that's okay. Just get it done. Just get it done. Sometimes you gotta just be horrible and do things the wrong way, but as long as they get done and they're not, the quality doesn't suffer, then you know, it's all good. In this case, all I really need to do is make sure that I've pushed solder through the strands to make sure that we got some solder in between the strandies and now we can tack these jib jabs on and away we go um, sometimes I tack these on the other direction sometimes I do them this direction I kinda like doing them this direction because it's um, oh, this is a fail I didn't have my uh, tweezers on the left side of my mat uh, sometimes I like to do them this direction so that the insulation of the wire uh, uh, insulates the um, the pads in the middle of these waffle caps that uh, you have to solder the actual pins of the um, capacitor to, right? If you shoot them off the other way, you've technically got some exposed little jib jabs there, jibby jab games. Let's do this the right way. What do you say? There we go. Pinch it up closer, and then you can just push the uh, tweezers into the waffle cap, or quite frankly, whatever you're soldering, 
to have another point of contact for less shakiness. All right, that should be fine. And nope, well, it's not. This one moved back a little bit too far. So let's fix that. Always check your work, yo. Always check your work. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's take a second and do this the right way. I see another orange. Let's uh, one second. I will read it. What am I working on? This one? Hey, don't do that. Don't go running away. Come back. Come on. Come on. Just, I just need a little bit. Just, come on. There we go. Should be enough. Yeah. All right. Just wanted to move that one forward a little bit. And, yeah, that's fine. Not the prettiest solder joint of my life, but it's plenty strong, I will bet. Yep. Plenty strong, plenty flat. Totally fine. Okay. Uh, let's now move on to knocking everything over. What do you say? Eh, down. I'm going to need more solder in a minute, but we'll wait until the absolute last second for that. Because that's how we do things. Fella. Okay, uh, let's see. Supercell says 55 amp on the bottom. They put a small PC board and attached it with three small solder points to the main board. Broke the solder loose, need the reflow. Ugh, who can do this? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Joshua has a reflow station, um, but... Reach out to him and ask him. I'm sure he knows somebody that has a reflow station. Uh, Ryan Harrell's up there. I wouldn't be surprised if he has one. Uh, he might be able to hook you up. I, I would just... I would just... Um, Discord text chat for stream-related stuff would be nice. Yeah, I, I have the... I can open the Discord, but to be honest with you guys, it's... Um, it's just another thing for me. Like it, I tried that on the, uh, I did that little juicy flick in Velocidrome, Velocidrone thing the other day, and I had Discord up when I was doing that, and man, it was hard to manage that and everything else. So, what what would be the advantage of having the Discord up right now versus just the uh, the YouTube chat? Um, Big D says, D D you no, know, we can't see what you're doing. Yeah, it, it, it's really hard, man. Doing a, a live stream with building is harder than I ever thought. Um, you typically see builds and edits, so the, the publisher of said edit can chop out all the times that it was just all fingers. Um, this is the best camera angle I've found, and I just, I'm trying my best to point the camera up and down and, and just kind of keep my fingers out to the sides. Um, I don't know if it if it becomes too much of an issue, we'll just stop doing the the build streams, and we'll just focus on uh, all the other fun stuff that we can do in the streams. Uh, you know, flying in Velocidrone, chatting about stuff, this, that, and the other thing. Let me know. Um, that's that's up to you guys. Uh, for me, I have. I have building that needs to get done, so <laughs> I, I'm kind of locked into this. Actually, you know what? Let me figure out this capacitor before we do the um, before we do the run cam, uh, because uh, because of reasons. Just for picks, Puffy says. Ah, right, right. You guys can't put pictures up. All right. Well, let's see how the uh, let's see how this old battle axe of a computer handles me running. It should be fine actually, because I only have the one camera going. When when I have the uh, DSLR going, um, my computer has a hard time. Uh, so I'm gonna ha I'll be in general nonsense in Discord. So if you guys want to, um. 
If you guys want to post a picture, throw in general nonsense in Discord, and then I can show it in the stream. How about that? Cool. Good call, Puffy. Good idea. Uh, okay, so I need to put this capacitor somewhere. Uh, let's dry set up-ish this. I'm pretty sure I know where it's going to go, but I will kind of talk through my thought process, I guess, um, to make sure that it doesn't get in contact with anything important, basically. So let's do this the other way. I want to do this with uh, the side plate that has all the standoffs to give myself an idea of where those standoffs are going to be and how I'm going to have to kind of work around them. So let's get this back in here. We'll get this as close as possible to the way that it's going to be in my head so far, pieced together. All right, so let's get this on here. And get this in here. Okay, so I don't really need this in here. Let's get that out of there. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Uh, so my thought process initially was receiver down there. So I'm going to use this, this rear set of holes for uh, zip tie to hold it in. And then this guy, the um, Rush Tiny Tank is going to go on top, uh, which is kind of cool because it, it just, it uses some of the void left by that stupid gigantic plug header. Yes, I could pull that plug header off and depin it, but it is actually kind of nice to have that plug header there every so often. Um, so I'm probably just going to do it like that. Uh, and then just run one big zip tie over top and I'll get a little piece of VHB there just to give it some grip and So yeah, that's gonna be like that and what I can already tell is we have plenty of room here so I could um, I could hang it off of the bottom of this um, Standoff, but It's not a ton of room. It, it does start to kind of get close and we got to remember that on hard crashes this clean plate is going to move down significantly, probably like two or three millimeters. Um, so I don't necessarily want to do that. I could then just rotate it backwards a little bit. Um, but the other thing I want to remember is I'm going to have a bunch of zip ties on this uh, for the all three antennas, for the 5.8 antenna and for the diversity um, RXSR antenna. So on my V1 build, this standoff is very busy. It's got three different um, three different zip ties on it. There's shrink wrap on some of these guys. It's it's just not um, the best place. Uh, on the V1, I used to have the capacitor here um, to uh, VHB and zip tied to the side plate, um, and I could totally do that again. That I'm starting to think that is what I'm going to do. Just put it right there, and then I can run a zip tie around here, and little tiny piece of VHB will keep it. Yeah, you know, that's the setup that I had. I don't want to put it back here uh, because, again, putting a zip tie around this, the zip tie gets awful close to the base plate down here um, when you have some compression going on. Uh, Nix, I don't know if the Rush VTX gets hot, but what I do know is that I have this same little communication package set up with a TBS Nano Pro 32 uh, which is smaller than this rush tank and it doesn't have the nice heat sink on the bottom and it's been fine uh, So this with the heat sink um, on this VTX I can't imagine it'll, it'll get any hotter and it should be quite a bit cooler uh, Than what I already have that's working in my other rig. So until that proves me wrong I am gonna just go for it and because it's it's just it's worth going for it because it's just such a nice little clean kind of setup You know what I mean? So we'll see if it, uh, I mean, it should work. It should work totally fine. I'm pretty confident that it'll be good to go. Um, the other thing that I want to check is if I start raising this up, is it going to contact the, uh, what, at what point will it contact the clean plate? So if I line it up like that, oh, okay. 
So the answer is it'll contact it pretty easily. Uh, that is a problem. So let's flip it over here to get a better idea because I'm going to run it upside down. Uh, okay, so I basically only really need to get it that high. And you know, I mean, I technically could run it at an angle. The, I am putting it on these, um, these rubber... You know what? I'm going to do that. That is totally going to work. So since I'm putting it on these rubber standoffs, they'll just tilt. This is going to be a super strange setup, but it'll absolutely work totally fine, I'll bet you. Um, yeah, I'll run the front ones down like that, and then I'll just boost the rear ones up, and it'll just sit at an angle. And there's absolutely no reason for it not to be fine doing that, because I'm using these, uh, these little rubber guys. And, I mean, maybe they'll, they won't last as long because they'll be sitting at an angle, but who cares? This is a way of fixing this issue that is pretty clean and, and sort of straightforward. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other option would be to flip the ESC upside down. Um, but the problem with doing that is... Everything is already put together. <laughs> um, I'd have to pull all the motors off, and uh, I might also need to... Nah, it looks like it would clear. Well, now I'm thinking about doing that. So if I flip it upside down, I'll have a twist in the motor wires, and then it'll kind of be a pain because it's only... Uh, it's kind of a, it's going to be a pain to do that. Wait a second. What if I put it down below? If I take these, uh, if I take these metal guys off, I could mount it down really low. Well, shit. Let's try that because that is a more. As much as I want to run these rubber guys. Um, nah, you know what. Uh, ben, if anything, I want to lower the center stack, but, which I could, I could lower it a little bit. I, I do have the clearance to lower the center stack. I totally have the clearance to lower the center stack, but, uh, what, I would need a one mil. I wonder how much that would give me, realistically, would... So one mil down, I'm just kind of like lining this up by eye. Uh, and then the other option is I run the, nah, that won't have the length. Um, I could run these wires downwards under the ESC, uh, but I don't think they're quite long enough because in the back, there's this big bump out for the... Uh, for the power leads, so I'd have to go around that to get under it, and I don't think this harness is going to be long enough. And I also try to keep wires away from these. So... Maybe what I'll do... Oh, but see, if I go to... If I go from a... Yeah, there's... There's another issue there. I could take that off though, and I could drop this top down. This, uh. Um. I mean, Christ, technically I could put it in the main stack. Like, there is enough room, uh. to put it into the main stack, but that's kind of, Oh, no, there's not. No, there's not. There's enough room in the middle, but there's not enough room with the side plates. And that's a good thing, because there's no reason to jam all three of those in the middle. Uh. So, um, you know, I wish Speedix just made a, uh, a 6S ESC that was like micro size, that was proper 20 by 20, didn't o'clock. have all this shit hanging off the front and the back. Uh, let me see how much slack I have on this wiring harness, because if I can, if I can run this wiring harness under the ESC, that will free up a bunch of space. 
Oh wow, I have more slack than I thought. Interesting. Uh, hmm. So it's going to have to go. Well, let's do this. Let's. Oh, you know, I don't. I don't have as much as I thought because of the blue one that has to be going to the LED pad. Oh, man. Oh, this is what I hate about working on micros. Everything is so close together. Oh, my God. 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 So here's what's going on. Here are the different things um, that I'm trying to weigh in my head. Um, if I... So I really would like to... So these uh, DV digital video... Or HD, rather, boards um, on any of these HD cameras, um, in my experience, they don't love big, hard crashes. Um, I think there's so many components on here, and I know they get very, very hot. Um, I think those two things plus a big collision, um, these boards just die. I think that the components are all so hot that you introduce like a 100G spike, and the components will shift or break off or, or something like that. So I really want to try to get them onto these rubber uh, jib jabs so that it'll decrease the shock a little bit, at least in the front, back, left, and right directions. These guys won't do anything for an up and down uh, slam, but that's okay. Currently, it's smashing into these wires. So if these wires had enough length, I could run them under the ESC so that this angle um, is going down. Uh, or I can just try to boost these back to up enough where it clears this guy. But if you look at it from the side there, it's down this low now. It's going to have to be like way the hell up here, which is probably not that bad of a deal. But um, then these guys are always going to be pretensioned like that because I'm going to literally have to move the board to be at an angle. Um, so these guys are always pretensioned like that. And eventually that rubber is going to perish and die. Um, will that happen before I have to completely tear this thing apart? Probably not. And, and replace them? And are they, you know, just pennies to replace? Yes. Um, I could also drop the ESC down a little bit. I could pull all four of these. Right now I have a 2 millimeter spacer on the bottom below the ESC. There is a little bit of room below the ESC. Um, so I could drop the ESC down by one millimeter. That would buy me a little bit of room, still not quite enough. Um, but it would buy me a little bit of breathing room. Um, or I could do a combination of all the above. I'm going to think about that. While I'm thinking about that, I'm going to solder this um, capacitor up. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, smaller rubber O-rings under the cam board so I can get it under the ESP plug. One millimeter space is that something rigid. Uh, possible to run the flight control in the front. Totally. Cam board on the center stack. Yeah, I could absolutely do that, but I would probably run into the same issue. Um, uh, actually, no, I couldn't do that because the uh, run cam hybrid board is M2 hardware only and the, um, yeah, the ESC is... M3, so that would be a whole big pain in the ass. I mean, technically, yes, I could do it. I could reduce it down, but um, I'm going to try to do this a little bit simpler than that. So let me just do some soldering uh, to get this guy, to get this capacitor on here. Um, let's see. Get a rough idea of how much cable length I need. The cables are probably just about correct as they are now so it's pretty much going to butt up against there and these guys are going to go sideways uh, probably tuck them under the uh, zip tie there so yeah I could chop these down a little bit I'll chop like I don't know half an inch off of them let's see 
<clears throat> All right. So let's go. I'm going to take a guess and do that much. And hopefully that wasn't too much because there's no going back now. Let me. Hot glue. <laughs> we can do anything with hot glue. Very true. And it would probably be totally fine, all things considered. There we go. All right, so let's get these guys tinned and soldered. Hey, look at that. Maybe that's why there's that little slot. It's to hold it while you solder, while you tin. Look at this little guy. Yeah, I did a little cute guy. Oh, all right. Tip a little cleaner here, and we will tin. If you're going to do it, something like this, just be really careful and uh, be observant of any solder balls that might go flying because if they land on the ESC, you're going to want to get them off before you put mad success power to it. Uh, the better solution is just to take one extra second and get your wood board out and do this on your little wood board or whatever you have the solder on top of. But I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to keep things in the frame for you guys to see. There we go. One down, no solder balls. And... Come on. Come on, don't be a jerk. Oh, all right, let me stop because I can see that there's a uh, a strand coming loose and I'm at the end of my little thing of solder. All right, so I got that one strand taken care of. I don't know where the hell that came from. It came out of nowhere. And we'll do it the wrong way again. Why not? But this way I will move these wires away from the ESC. Now we just have to worry about solder balls going in the motors. All right. Um, ben, that's pretty much the only way that he's even remotely smooth. That's how. Um... Yeah. Okay, so we're good. That's tinned. Uh, let's make sure that we solder the wrong one to the right pad. Uh, since, you know, we're using black wires on both, you definitely want to make sure you screw that up so that the capacitor explodes. It's always a fun day. Okay, so um, this gold strip here with the big um, the big hollow minus on it that's the uh, the negative side of this guy so we'll just put this guy somewhere around here yeah, that'll be fine and all right so let me think about where I want my iron to come in so I'll do it from there and then I also want to um, kind of point these to the side a little bit uh, just to kind of get them out of the way because we're going to have a bunch of wires coming down here. So I pretty much want it kind of exactly at that angle. So it's always helpful to just kind of think about what you're about to do with soldering so you don't get into a situation where the joint is already hot and you realize that you can't fit your um, tweezers in there or you can't... Uh, Whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. This is my little trick for keeping the solder the solder under control. I just go like that. And then it makes a nice little uh, circly bastard that you can then stand up on your desk. All them tricks. Alright, so we'll pull this over here. We'll get everything where we want it to. Get some flux going because... The battery lead pads are always a pain in the ass, especially the uh, ground pad. 
Uh, we're also going to do, uh, we're going to work towards ourselves. We're going to do this one first, and then we're going to do this one because the wires are facing that direction, um, just so that we're not trying to cross over ourselves. So, we got it fluxed. Soldering iron is clean. Kristen just came in. I wanted you to lick the back of the spoon. She wants me to lick the back of the spoon. Ow. Oh my god, she's out there making tomato sauce. Freshy, fresh tomato sauce, and it's wonderful. I wish this was smell vision but it's not. You guys will have to wait for your wonderful wives and or girlfriends and or mothers to make awesome homemade tomato sauce to get the experience that I just had. Uh, we're going to give this a second here. There it goes. Everything just um, went fluid, not putting a lot of downward pressure, and that is a pretty solder joint. Um, it is showing like lines of where it cooled, but that's actually okay. Um, they're not defined enough that I'm worried about it. And then we'll do the positive side, which is always going to be a lot easier. And down it goes. One second here, and all right, the whole thing is fluid. Get out of there, be as still as possible. All right, so I'm going to check this negative side for uh, a cold solder joint because of the way that, that it um, cooled in sections. So I'm going to give this a good hard pull, and that's totally fine. I also like to just like get my fingernail up on the solder joint to feel for any really rough, hard edges, and there are none. Um, and we'll test our positive while we're at it. Um, just snip that little edge off there, and yeah, we're good to go. So those are nice and strong. Um, there is going to have to be a twist in them, but that's okay. And it's just going to basically sit right up here somewhere. Oh, you know, I should have made this negative pad a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Yeah, so that'll work. That'll be totally fine there. Um, hell, I might even be able to run it like that. But we'll see. That's good to go. Get it out of the way. Now we're going to figure out the... Uh, the HD board. Um, Protonigo says, small rubber O-rings under the cam board, so I get underneath, oh, underneath. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you were saying over top. I read that too fast. Um, so you're, that was my, that was my one thought, um, is to put it down nice and low. Um, my only worry about doing that is uh, that I'm no longer using these guys. Um, that's more of a hard-mounted solution, and that kind of worries me with these HD boards. Also because they're kind of expensive um, with how hard I slam. Um, so I this is my first experience with the the Runcam hybrid boards. Uh, so maybe they're maybe they're not um, as fragile as the old Runcam split boards, but. They look just like the old Runcam split boards. Like the way these components are laid out and how tight they are um, reminds me a lot of those old uh, Gen, uh, V1, V2 uh, single lens Runcam split boards. And that just scares me. Uh, so, but man, it would be a lot cleaner to just put this down, <coughs> down low. <coughs> Whew. Uh, Here's the other consideration is, where do the buttons go? I guess I would run this guy down low. Man, that is going to be a much easier fix for this, though. Because I can run that real low. Uh, if I run that really low, then I just have these solder joints, and then this plug just kind of comes up. Um, You know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, if nothing else, it'll be a torture test for the Runcam Hybrid board, uh, which is kind of important. I, I would love to have some feedback for you guys on how durable or not durable uh, the Runcam Hybrid board is. Because, I mean, there's a chance that putting it up on, on these guys is like kind of a necessity. And I would love to 
figure that out and be able to tell you guys that. So let's do it. I'll be the uh, I'll be the crash test dummy, and then if it blows up, I'll browbeat you guys into uh, uh, donating enough for us to replace it. <laughs> And we'll have uh, we'll have Proton to go to thank. <laughs> um, but it, to be honest with you guys, that's the kind of thing that I kind of pride myself on providing feedback on um, durability testing because I feel like that's a huge black hole in uh, in micros is what gear is durable and what gear isn't. Uh, I have not found much gear that is durable. Uh, I, I've, uh, yeah, so that's kind of a good thing for me to figure out. So thanks for that, Proton. I, I wish I'd read it the right way the first time. Um, so yeah, let's do that. I don't know. Will I be able to use these same ones? I might, because I'm going to put it really low. No, I probably need to use a little bit longer than that. So... Let's move this out of the way and let's figure out how low can you go, basically. How low can we go with this Runcam hybrid board? Uh, this is going to be a beautifully clean little setup, which I really do like. <clears throat> uh, Puffy says you can coat it with epoxy uh, so the components, components can't shift as easily. So that is what I initially did. Uh, Tommy actually gave me that tip. Uh, he said back in the old days, uh, they used to epoxy, they used to have to epoxy all their components. Um, so yeah, that's a trick that I used to do. I don't have epoxy ready, so I'm going to try to not do it this time. Um, I also know that a lot of people won't want to do that. So we'll run it without epoxy. We'll see what happens. If it blows up, um, then maybe we'll, we'll go down the epoxy road uh, maybe we'll just put it up on the rubber jib jabs. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a really good point. Um, if, if you have the time and or patience, uh, so I've epoxied these run cam boards. I have epoxied 30 by 30 ESCs and it does, I, I don't seem to have ever had an issue where they overheat. Uh, and on one of the run cam boards, it still failed after a big slam. So maybe the epoxy has nothing to do with why the run cam boards are failing. Maybe it does. Maybe it was just some other component that went. Um, but I think the important thing is that in my experience, ha epoxying your boards does not seem to make them overheat any worse. So there's almost kind of no reason to not do it um i just don't want to put the time in i have i have too many i don't have any working rigs right now i i, I need to fix quads so i'm just going to rip through this i'm also super curious because telling somebody that they need to epoxy you know hey go buy the run cam hybrid just make sure that you epoxy all the components like yeesh, that's uh that's kind of that's kind of rough <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a um, it's a tough pill to swallow. If you catch me drift, eh. All right, so we got one in there. Let's grab a couple little M2 standoffs and see how low we can put it. Um, I'm gonna grab. I think I have some some M2 rubber O-rings in here somewhere. Um. I could have sworn that I did. Yeah, I do. There they are, all the way at the bottom. Okay, so we got one. We got two. We got three. And we got four. Oh, nope, no, we don't. Ooh, look at these fatter ones. That Those, those are the ones that I want. I want these fatty ones. Where are they? Um, ooh, 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 there's another fatty. All right, we got two fatties. Let's see if we can find numbers three and four. Come on, fatties. Where are you, my little fatties? Oh, oh God, my phone's going off. Uh, ooh, ooh, fatty number three. 
Found you. All right, come on, fatty number four, where are you? Huh, is that it? <laughs> fatty number four. All right, I'm kill my phone. And all right, let me put the skinny guys back in here. Nobody likes a skinny guy. <laughs> I'm a skinny guy, for the record. I can I can say that because I'm a skinny guy. All right, and we'll put our little glip glops in there. Um, just in case I need something. Oh, you know what? Since I... Eh. Eh, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. I'm thinking about going to a different... Um, top nut solution. But... Nah, we'll leave it. All right, let's just do these. I think these fatty guys are going to be perfect. I have faith... In the fatty guy, <laughs> ESK says, I see one in the upper right. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. ESK, did you actually see one in the upper right, or were you just messing with me? Either way, good form, sir. All right, so with a fatty guy, uh, we need this. And I'm going to put these guys on the bottom I think um, yeah I guess I'm gonna do it like this let's see if we have enough okay so we do have enough screw that's a good thing just barely but we don't have enough rubber o-ring because I can immediately see that the uh, the uh, the little plug header is smashing into the ground so that's okay what if we flip the board upside down well this is actually probably right side up but you guys know what I mean um, if I do that it's still not quite enough all right so we need a second little o-ring and then that's gonna mean that this screw is too short which is fine Proton how did you do it with just one it must have been a fat o-ring Jeez. Um, I'm using my fatty boys, and they're not fatty enough. <laughs> this conversation has gone off the rails. Uh, okay, moving the mic. Hopefully, don't deafen you guys. All right, back into our. Oh my god, there's pictures in the Discord. What do we got? We got pictures in the Discord. Who's posting pictures? Big Willie's posting pictures. Oh my god, you guys are all posting pictures. Everybody has a, uh, a duo but me. All right, let me go to uh, monitor with Zoom mic. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's see what we got. What's going on here? I'm going to roll over. I'm going to roll over and take a look. What do we got here? Um, what's that keystroke to Zoom? There it is. All right, so we've got ESC flight controller. I guess this is the Rush Tank VTX. And then, what's that down there? Why are there two? Oh no, that's the V. Oh, it's a um, it's a Tarsier. Okay, it's a Tarsier. Yeah, see, and it's not it's not coming as close there. All right, so there's that. How do I get out of here? All right. That's from Puffy. And then what do we got here? Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's a cool way to do it. I like that. I like that way of doing it. All right. And then... Oops. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We've gone too far. We've gone too far. Far. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking of doing, too, is just boosting it up. Interesting. I dig that setup, man. I like it. I'm not going to do it, but I, I do like it. <laughs> uh, Mauer, what are you building? You are building something on the Drib Motors. Uh, all right, all right, all right. What frame is that? That looks like a... What's that, a CL1 frame? Looks like a CL1 frame. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
Big Willie is going to give those crazy 3052s a little workout, and he's going to make all the thrust in the world. All right, all right, that's cool. Digging that. Yeah, buddy. I love running the the uh, receiver antennas off the arms like this. I did this for like two years before I went to the uh, Immortal L rear setup. Eshin, what the hell motors are those? What are you? I didn't know Eshin made big motors anymore. Can I see it in the other picture? <laughs> and hence. Enhance. What motors are those, Big Willie? I want to know. I did not know that uh, they made bigger motors. Very cool. Stingy V2. Ah, good on you. RC Nitro Fuel Line. All right, am I zoomed all the way out yet? Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Um. Okay. All right, let's get back to it. Oh, my God. Micro building takes so long, and it's so unforgiving, and I hate it, and I hate it, and I hate it, and I hate it. Oh. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. 1607, what the hell? Wow, good on you, Ishin, for uh, for just going for it. 1607, it's a biggin. That is a biggin. Um, okay, so what's the next size up? I am kind of lacking on the, on the M2 screw front right now. All right, this is the next size that I think I am going to need. Let's just, it's gonna be the last set that I've got. That's okay though. Wait a second, why is that one so much longer than the other one? Because it was in the wrong bin, that's why. All right. Any of you guys have uh, Kung Flu yet? Anybody? Or is it just Joshua? Oh great, I only have three. Oh, that's just terrific. I am. So happy that I only have three of these. That really just... <sighs> Son of a bitch. You... I mean, where'd the fourth one go? Like, I don't think it's in the carpet, because it's this long. If it were shorter, I could totally see it being in the carpet. Um... Damn you. Oh, you god damn son of a bitch. Okay, I'll have to use these big ugly silver ones. That's a real That's a real shame. You guys can't see what I'm doing at all. Oh, really? 3. I've got 3. 3. Not two, three. All right, well, it's no longer good looking. It's now going to be an ugly build. Um, man, that makes me sad. <laughs> okay, I need more uh, jib jabs. Yeah, I know, Mongo. Mongo, have you looked at what it costs? They're kind of expensive. I mean, they're not actually expensive, but it's like 40 something dollars. I was, uh, I don't know. I'm definitely going to get it at some point, but uh, seems like maybe a good like uh, birthday. My birthday's coming up, April 17th, and uh, I don't know. Maybe that, that feels like a good Christmas present for my dad. He gets me, uh, you know tools and, and such so maybe I'll have to drop a little hint on him that I need a magnetic pad because I don't have 40 bucks right now I am uh, in a weird financial place right now so probably actually gonna have to unfortunately pull a couple bucks out of next month's patreon payout uh, to cover some bills and some stuff just to get back on my feet. But, hey man, that's what you gotta do sometimes. Luckily, uh, some cool companies will come through like Tiny's LEDs and like, well, the, the Stan um, giveaways are already out 
and the uh, I think I only have one just a switch left. Um, but I've got Billy's rig to give away if I can ever get the damn thing outside when it's not raining. Um, so that'll help a lot. Yeah, basically I'm I'm hoping that uh, I have enough giveaways kind of stacked up where I'll be okay um, for next month because otherwise it's gonna get a little interesting I don't know where the uh, dollars and cents are gonna come from but we'll figure it out I always do all right so let's see here oh yeah two is the ticket two is the ticket maybe Let's just, man, I, I, it, <clears throat> let's see. All right, let me, which way am I going to put this? I'm going to put this like this. And then those guys are going to have to come up at an angle. So let me just get these bent the way that they need to be. And then let me bring them up at an angle. And, okay. Okay. All right, that should be a little bit better. Let's see if I can sneak this under and get this. Hey, there it is. Okay, so first and foremost, that is, that does seem to be enough. Man, you guys aren't going to be able to see this at all. This is really, this is hard for me to even see. Um, so that is enough rubber to keep that from hitting the bottom. There's a big old something or other back here which is just right up against that plug um, I can't spin this sideways I can flip it over though let's see how it does flipped over so those are gonna be kind of a problem and then the the memory card is going to be all the way on the bottom. That's going to kind of be annoying, but not the end of the world. Let's just see. Let's see if this is any better flipped over here. It is, I think, but I feel like I might need another one of those. Well, let's, let's put some screws in here and we'll see what happens yeah it's definitely going to clear that though all right i think i like this I, th I think i like it set up like this the memory card is going to be a real bitch to get out and i'm going to have to have that piece of plastic down there hmm okay i mean it definitely seems like the bottom of the board is flatter than the top so that's a good thing um I could flip it around. No, I don't want to flip it around because then these wires go straight into that. So if I'm going to run it with those up, it's definitely going to want to need to be this way. The question becomes, do I have enough room on the bottom to get the, uh, to get the memory card in and out? On the, um, on the split, <clears throat> single lens split V1, they put a... Uh, they put a, oh my God, I'm sleepy. They put a USB, a micro USB port on it that you could just plug in to pull your footage off of. And my God, I love that. I really, really like that setup. Um, nowadays, they're not setting them up like that anymore. Um, so you have to pull the memory card every time. Um, so I just have to make sure that I have access to it because it's going to be all up on these wires and yeah. Um, I don't want that to become an issue. So let's just screw it down and see what happens, basically, at this point. Um, I don't think there's any better way of uh, plastic washer. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm using these. These, uh, these little rubber O-rings are basically one mil. Uh, and if I go any higher than I am right now, it will, uh, it'll start to hit this connector so like I'm at maximum height <clears throat> and I would I would rather the spacers be rubber to be honest with you guys uh, so I am gonna leave it like this but let's see what happens here 
let's put this little, uh, this is gonna also bump it up a little bit, which hopefully that's gonna be okay. Um, oh my God. Why can't it be a little bit easier to build micros? Why can't there just be... I mean, 5-inch frames are tight too, but like, I don't know, it's just so much easier to build them. <laughs> Ugh. Alright, here we go. Oh, nope, 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 nope. I need the, uh, I need the little rubbers. Mm, this is the other thing. This is the reason why I try to use threaded spacers um, right above the base plate, because it makes... This situation that I'm currently in of these screws wanting to just fall out uh, a little bit better. Um, this is totally doable. This is just a pain in the ass to work on. Which, these little bastards are already plenty of a pain in the ass to work on. But, I don't have any threaded 1mm um, spacers. So, this is kind of the way that we have to do this right now. And it's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little annoying. Um, so eventually here I will desolder this connector and uh, solder these on in a better orientation. But for right now, I just want to see if this works. So I actually have to angle it under to get it to clear that plug because that's how close it is. So there we go. All right, so that one's angled under and it's clearing and Let's see if we can get this one in. There we go. Okay, so that one's in. All right, so the plastic piece is there, and it totally does clear that plug. Awesome. Okay, so it clears that plug. Um, it doesn't look like the memory card will be too much of a pain in the ass. I should just be able to go in and bloop and just pop it right out. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Um, that was just a test fit, though. I need to, to get these straightened out. Um, so let's move this aside. We'll bring in some wood. First person to say that's what she said in the comments wins. Uh, soldering iron should still be on. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and... Okay. Let's go for it. Ah, that's a good idea, Proton. Oh, you're doing a you're doing a rubber and a plastic. All right. Well, I'll do double. Well, the the one um, the one rubber that I'm running is like a half a mil, uh, so I'm gonna stick with this. But uh, because I'm just barely clearing that, um, but your setup sounds totally fine as well. Which um, what do you have the uh, did you Proton? Did you say that you have this same ESC? Uh, if so. Why isn't my soldering iron working? Um, no, if so, what do you have the... Um, what do you have the... What spacers do you have under it? I've got two mil under mine. I'm wondering how many mil you've got under yours. Alright, and I'm just soldering these the other direction so that they're no longer contacting the um, uh, pointing towards the thing that I'm having issues hitting. Why is this not letting go? What's, what's, I mean, I know that's the ground and all, but the whole thing is going liquid and the wire will not let go. Come on, you little jackass. What? Okay, that's, Super annoying. I'll hook it around here. Maybe it'll just need a little gusto on it. There it is. Nope, that's just my tweezers sliding off. Wow, this is really stubborn. Let me get the uh, positive out of the way real quick. Okay, everything is just going to fight me today. So. All right, there's that. Can you guys see anything? Nope, of course not. And, all right, I'm going to have to do this the right way instead of just half-assing this to get this uh, ground off because it will not let go. So let's get a piece of tape out, and we'll tape it down. 
so that I can pull on that ground wire to actually get it to let go. Although now that I taped it down, I'm sure it'll just come right off. That's the way it works. And I should also be fluxing it, but I mean, this is a tiny little joint and there it goes, of course. Yep, there it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, immediately. Didn't need to tape it down, just needed to hit it one more time. Must have been loosening up ever so slightly. So I do want to get some of the solder off of here. And I'm going to do that by flicking outwards like that. And none of it came off, so we'll try it again. And we're going to... And that got a nice big blob of it off. I do need to add some, though, because it is going very, very milky. Um, because it has run out of flux. Uh, let me try to cheat it, though. Let me try doing this. This might might just work let's see nope wow even that's not working I'm just gonna leave it it's fine it's a strong joint there's a bunch of solder doesn't matter that much that it's uh, a little ugly and a little milky when it's milky like that, it, it can signify a cold solder joint, but I don't think it does in this case. I think we're fine. I think it's just a lack of flukes. Flukes. Oops, that was a shitty one. A little capacitor right behind it. Boosted it up at the last second. I always like the wires to sit down as flat against the pads as possible. Solder is not a good mechanical, um, it's not good mechanically. So the tighter your, the strands of wire are to the, uh, to the pad itself, the better. Okay, now it's just trying to piss me off. Ah, all right. The tip of the iron is disgusting. Mad oxidization. That's better. Now it's picking up the solder like it should. And now it's just going to flow all nice and make a proper little joint and all is well with the world. Yep. All right. So now we're good. That's fine. Again, not the prettiest, but it'll work. Get some tape out of here back on the side of my desk secret little tape spot uh is that the board with the broken regulator it fucking better not be techno no it's not um lumineer uh lux mini esc with the same rubber plastic washer combo underneath got it got it proton okay so now we're good these are fine let me at least look at them real quick under the 5x loop make sure i didn't bridge any boards because it uh, bridge any chips because again, these um, run cam and Cadex and any of these HD boards are just crammed full of stuff. And we're good to go. Let's get these solder balls out of here so that they don't get picked up. And find their way places that they shouldn't be. Alright, we're good. So, I think now we can just bolt this thing down, hopefully without ripping that component off of a second board. Um, of course, that screw just fell out of there. I expected that to happen. Uh, let me face this up a little bit. And... Okay, let's see. If... Ah, farts. Ah, farts, everything fell out. You jerk. Everything but this little collar. Okay, cool. So, we got the little collar... And then we got our fatty, and then we got our skinny, and eh. okay, okay, so they're in there, they're in there, and now we got to try to get our little plastic guy back, oh, 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 hold on, let's hold this guy, oh god, it's slipping, it's slipping, 
It's slipping. Oh, got it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Where is it? Where'd I put it? Oh, God, it's on the left. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We got this. We got this. All right. All right, we got it. We got one. And we got two. Okay. And now that those wires are out of the way, it actually pops in there a lot easier. Okay. All right, so we got these. I'm just going to put anything on them to, to keep them from backing out. Um, well, might as well be the, the purple glips. Uh, can you guys hear me? The mic's probably too far away. You guys probably can't hear me. I'm whispering and talking to myself. And <clears throat> um, Okay, just anything. Just anything on here. Just a little bit of threads. Just to... Just to kind of hold these guys in. Hey, okay. All right, that should be enough to hold them in, and now we can get the other two ones in. Uh, okay. Yeah, over here. Put this down. Let me do it up here so you guys can see me. Okay, ugly silver screw in, and then, all right, now's when the finagling is going to really begin. Okay, okay, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, I should do this with the tape. I should do the tape trick. I like that tape trick. Um, I'll do the tape trick next time. Let's do it the stupid way this time. Uh, to just show people what not to do. This is what not to do. What was that show, What Not to Wear? What not to wear and do with Ciotti. Okay. Okay. Everybody be quiet. Be very quiet. Oh, God. Oh, God. Everything's moving. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. All right. Let's try it again. Let's work harder, not smarter. That's our theme for right now. I might actually not be able to get this. All I gotta do is say that, and then I'll always get it. Nope, I didn't get it. Oh, man, come on. The other one's gonna be even harder, because it's on the inside. I might need to do the tape trick. Alright, doing the tape trick. I don't have enough fingers to, uh, to get this to work. Alright, so we need to pull these off. And... I didn't tighten it that much. Are you kidding me? Let's see if I can break another component off with my fingernails this time. All right, that one's gone. Let's get this one out of here. Come on, come on. Uh, and for the record, I broke that component off for sure last time when I was getting frustrated. Um, there was a there was a moment where I got very frustrated last time, and uh, that is definitely where I broke that component off. So. Take a lesson from Dum Dum Ciotti. Don't drive angry. Okay, so let's get this done the intelligent way. Let's just drop this in here, and then we'll take this, and we'll take this, and we will drop this one on the front, and then we'll just tape them down. Like a smart person, I can't believe I never thought to do that. Um, that's why it's nice to hive mind stuff, man. Get that hive mind working for us. Let's see if the electric tape is wide enough. Of course not. Eh, maybe it is. Maybe it's just wide enough. Let's see. No, it's not going to work. Not going to work. Let's cut it in half. What are you guys talking about over there? Super glue. I'm not going to. Super glue. What are you, crazy proton? Super glue. Jeez. What are you trying to do, get white? It's bad enough that we got silver screws. Now you want me to get white residue everywhere? Come on, man. Come on, you're better than that. <laughs> um, yeah, I could. I'm not going to do that, though. Super good. Did I have to get another thing out of the drawer? God, Jesus. Oh, look, they're, they're sticking together already. Look at that. Look at that action. All right, big boy, little boy, big boy, little boy. 
Eh, come on, big boy. Get in there. Get in there, fat O-ring. Yeah. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing again. Sorry. All right, little fella. Get you on there. Okay, got another little fella here. Get you up in there. Uh-oh, the tape's coming off. Oh my god, the tape's coming off, guys. Oh no! Everybody panic. Tape's coming off. We got a deadly flu virus moving around the earth. Man. Crazy time we live in. Uh, come on, tape. Don't, don't come off. Stay on. Be, be good, tape. Be better than, you're better than this, tape. All right, where's the card slot? There's the card slot. Let's see. Come on, electric tape. Hold on for dear life. Move these guys up a little bit just to get them out of the way. And look at that. Other than this one corner. Oh, no, look at that. It held on just enough, and I can probably just pull it up. Yay, look at that. Whee, farts. All right. So let's get some little nutties on. So just hold these guys in place, although they're probably going to want to spin. But maybe not. Maybe it'll get just enough thread on. Come on, little fella. Catch a thread. Maybe two. Yes, that caught a thread. Excellent. Next. Replacement motor for the buzz. Oof. Oof. I don't know. Go fly in the wind, man. Flying in the wind is fun. It's like a challenge to... Uh, to try to get enough P-Gain in there to deal with the wind. Ooh, did I feel that just catch a thread or two? I did! Look at that! Yo, the tape! And if I'd gotten the tape on there properly, not all janky and half-assed, it would have been really good. Tape, man. Good call. And come on, just catch one thread. Just one. Just one. Yeah! Cool! Alright. Now we got this guy. We'll push him up. And where's the fourth? Where's the fourth purple fella? There it is. And let's get a turn or two on. The oh, look at that. So that is too close. Wow, that is really close. Come on. Oh, come on, run cam. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to be able to fit any nut on there. Like, for real. I guess I'm just going to have to glue that. Um, no, 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 no. Since I'm not using a spacer on the bottom, I can probably turn the screw onto the nut. Let's see. Let's see. Um, so this is the, the nice thing about not running something threaded on the bottom is uh, sometimes you can just get the nut turn to the exact right direction and then just spin that but man no this nut is literally too big this what it will not at any angle clear this uh connector man that's annoying but not the end of the world i'll grab i think the uh the black plastic nuts are a little bit smaller on the external uh on the outer diameter rather Let's give it a shot. All right. If not, I do have a solution. But I think this is going to work. It feels like it, it might just kind of slot in there. Let's see. Nope. It will not. It is too big. Okay. So that's all right. Uh, Run Cam used to give you these little fellas. Oh, wait, no, not run camp. Somebody. Um, these little fellas. And they are perfectly round and threaded. So they will work. Man, this is going to be an ugly ass build. Nobody look at this build. It's too ugly. Everybody, avert your gaze. This build is just too ugly now. Too ugly for life. 
Um, man. That is just a bucket of yuck. Uh, so the other thing I'm going to have to do is Loctite this little guy because it doesn't have Nylock. These other guys are Nylock. Um, so I'm going to Loctite this just to make sure it doesn't uh, vibrate out. Oh, yeah. I could flip the screw. That's a good call. So if I flip the screw, then I'm going to have a nut on the bottom. Yeah, I'll just Loctite this. This will be fine. Come on. Get off of there. Come on. There we go. Mercury adhesive. To the rescue. With a brush. All right. Yeah, that brush on there. Got this fella. Put it right here. And spin. Okay, cool. Alright, that should be good. Let's get these other guys. Ooh, we don't need the tape anymore. Cool. Let's see how these other guys do. Uh, I just became concerned that the bottom of this run cam board is, is hitting the carbon. Um, I was hoping that the two rubber O-rings were going to be just enough, but I might actually have to go to the plastic washer solution. What time is it? 4.57. 5 o'clock. Are you kidding me? I've been doing this for two hours? That can't be. An hour and 46 minutes. <sighs> Man. Man. Micros, yo. Uh, so here's the other thing that I want to check is that... Okay, so this metal nut is hitting all kinds of stuff. On this. I can't use these. I can't use these metal nuts. Um, man, I'm, I'm very frustrated right now. I'm very frustrated. I'm not having a great weekend. Um, I had my, like, week of not feeling horrible, and yesterday, the day before, feeling horrible came back, and it was like, oh, yeah, remember me? Yeah, here I come. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I got to be careful because if I get to the point where this really pisses me off, um, the depression will come in like a nuclear bomb and uh, it'll be really bad. So I am treading on thin ice right now. Let me go a little bit farther. I'm, I'm going to use these guys because they've... They've really packed these components in. Um, I'm not going to use these purple nuts. They're too, they're too big. My nuts are just too big, guys. That's what she said. She said from the living room. Um, and I do need to boost this up a little bit more. But luckily, what this proved to me is that this board is clearing this, um, which you guys can't see. This board is clearing the plug header, and I do have a little bit more vertical to go. So let's um, let's put a plastic spacer in here with the big rubber, um, and then I have to at least finish this build, though. My God, it's been like five streams that I've been building this fucking thing. Um, I'm going to push through. And we're going to get this done come hell or high water. Because we're very close. We're very, very close. Um, these are all the things that that take forever on micro builds that piss you off in the process. Um, this is why I took a big, it's long break long. from micros. Um, and just did 5-inch stuff for about a year. But 
I know a lot of you guys are here for the micro loving, and you guys support me, and that means a lot. So I will force myself to push through, and we will prevail. We will win. We will get at least one <laughs> rig done. It continues to rain outside, so I'm probably not going to fly today anyway. So maybe I'll do like a... Uh, Maybe I'll fix the other builds on tomorrow night's stream. But these purple nuts are a no-go. They are too big. I'm glad that I figured that out before wrecking another one of these boards. Um, okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to grab three more of these little glip glops. We are going to um, drop some uh, mercury adhesives into each one of them before I forget. So let's go one, two, I don't think you guys can see me doing this over here, but it's not super exciting. There we go. Okay. All four of those are blue Loctited. Next, we will take this off. We will grab plastic spacers. Should have listened to Proton in the first place. This is my punishment for trying to do it differently. Sometimes differently works out. Other times it doesn't. This is one of the other times. Okay, we're going to go in here. We're going to take, I guess, the little guy out. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the little guys. Little guys are coming out. Actually, with how tightly they've packed stuff, so let's check this. Let's check the, um, I always try to make sure that nothing is gonna push into the components. Um, the fact that it's rubber doesn't really matter so much, but I still like to kind of make sure. See, some of these components are so tight to these holes. Nah, it looks like these big guys are fine. It doesn't look like they're going to push against any components. All right, yeah, we should be fine. Um, so we're going to take the big guys out of there as well. We're going to put a plastic one mil spacer, and then we're going to put the big guys back again. And so help me God if that's not enough to space this thing up. I'm going to pick the whole thing up and throw it against the wall as hard as I can and never build another micro. So you guys will get to possibly experience that, um, which, I don't know, maybe that's exciting. I'm going to try to talk quiet right now because I'm right on top of the mic. About to eat that mic, son. Is this the good one? That's one of the good ones. And there's another one of the good ones. Okay. Let me look through this real quick just to make sure I don't have a one mil. <gasps> I do. I have a little one mil threaded flip-flop. Nah, I won't do that though. It looks like it's two mil anyway. Uh, okay, so I do want to compare the thickness of these one mil spacers to the thickness of these little O-rings. Yeah, so the little O-rings are the tiniest little bit skinnier than one mil, but they are rubber, so they are compressing much more easily. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just fly through it. Here we go. One, and two. Fall down, you jerks. Come on. Oh, wait. Sorry, guys. And three. Fall down. Come on. And four. Get Come on, fall down. Go down. The tape is not holding you hard. I can't push down hard. Get, get in there. Come on, man. Frustration is mounting. It's always just this stupid stuff. It's always just this ridiculous, stupid, little, annoying, like, who would have ever... Uh, there it goes. 
Okay. Big fatty washers. One. Two. Three. Who knows what commercial that's from? The only hint you're getting is it's from a commercial. And four. Okay. Oh, and this thing. And this thing. Okay. 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 We're good. Everything's fine. Nobody panic. Come on, tape. Hold on just enough. Come on, tape. Hold on. Hold it. Hold it, tape. Hold it. Okay. Get my little nut grabbers. Grab some of these little collars. Probably off camera. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on, come on. Just catch a thread. Catch a thread, buddy. Catch a thread. Yes, it caught a thread. Yeah. Two. Mm, come on. Get it? Nope. Come on, nut grabber. Cooperate. Yeah. Caught it some threads. Oh man, that one even tightened up. Look at that. Isn't that the special? All right, number three. The gold things are great. What are they called? Um, I don't know, but I ordered a big bag of them, I want to say from Amazon. So uh, remind me. And Tootsie Roll Pop, Big Willie and Daryl Hickman win the contest of being old. Because <laughs> that's an old commercial, guys, isn't it? I don't think that's a current um, Tootsie Pop commercial. Uh, okay. Uh, Proton, hold on. I will, uh, after I tighten this up, I will go look. Because these things are really nice. And they also work as spacers. And they have these little, uh, like, crenellation knurled, knurled bits on them. And yeah, they're real good. Uh, I just remembered I don't want to hammer these down. Because, oh, you guys can't see. Um, I don't want to hammer these down because they have that rubber O-ring on them. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of tightness. I think I cranked this one down a little bit too much. Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit of tightness. Just enough. And then that uh, that blue Loctite should be just enough to keep them from letting go. All right. A little bit of tightness. And... Little bit of tightness. Okay. I think that's good. I think that's where it's going to live. So now... Oh, so the left side is sitting up a lot higher than the right side because of that plastic thing. So let me crank the, um, the left ones down just a little bit more. Although that really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's sitting sideways like that. But it's an excuse to crank them down a little bit, and that's fine. Okay, so that, yeah, it's done. Whatever, it's fine. If it blows up, it blows up. I don't, I don't, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. It's fine. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, all right, let me find those, uh, let me find the these little flip-flops for you. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I got them on Amazon, and they have been really, really handy. So let's go to left screen monitor. Let's go here and we will look at, I will live on the stream, look at my past orders, which could be a bad idea. I'm going to hope that it isn't. I just scrolled past the bras, so we're, we're past that already. <laughs> um... Luckily, they're just fairly normal bras. All the, all the really scandalous bras I don't buy on Amazon. So this is all the way back to October 29th. Uh, I guess there's a chance that I did it before that. But I doubt it. I thought it was more recent than that. Um... <laughs> 
They're probably called M2 Knurled Brass Nuts ESK. Yeah, it's... Um, I can probably just search for it and find it, but I find it funny that I'm showing the entire world my Amazon order history right now. So I'm just going to keep going. All right, yeah, they're not... I must not have gotten them off of here. Um, M2 Knurled... Um, insert let's use the word brass in here as well there you guys go a hundred of them for seven dollars and 91 cents so there you go m2 neural brass inserts that'll find them there's the link get you some i didn't order this many i, I wonder where i got them from um what if i search my uh i feel like an fpv shop might have them um, brass M2. What if I search my email for brass M2? No messages found, but just M2. Uh, M2 spacer, maybe? Nah, well, I don't know where I got them from, but you guys can just get them from, uh, Amazon. If you, and if you hit one of my, um, if you hit one of my Amazon uh, things in the place, I'll get something. Here you guys go. Coming in hot with the chat. If you order some of those, click this first. You don't even have to, uh, you don't even have to buy whatever that item is that I just linked you to. Um, it'll get me in that thing in the place with the things in the places. You guys know what it is. You guys know what's up. Oh my God. These will be up in a few hours. Ooh, look at that, guys. Going back to the screen. Look how fancy. More beautifully cut grip. Look at that, man. Look at that angle in there. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Tweet FPV is hooking it up as usual, getting the, um, the things and the places. Get you some grips. So I've actually used the grips now, and they are really cool they really do work um i'm very much digging having skateboard grip tape and i'm very upset that i waited this long to get it to be honest with you uh so highly recommended that skateboard grip tape on your transmitter and if you don't get it from tweet fpv then don't come back to the stream because you're dead to me you're not dead to me but you're probably dead to him we got to support our own yo Got to support our own. Oh. Big Willie, what are you talking about? They're inserts. You can drill out holes and epoxy them in. Why would, uh, why would, why would I do that? What do you mean? Drill out holes. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what they do in the sides of the cameras. So that's initially why I got them. Um, because I kept, um, well, I, I continue to blow these Micro Eagle housings up, um, so I've been epoxying them back in. Uh, but eventually, like this one, I've done it a bunch of times, I think this one might be, uh, might be down for the count. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, alright, 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 alright. Dana took a lunch break and he's back now. That's all right, Danny. You, you've been working hard as a moderator in here. You get a you get a half hour lunch. It's not a paid lunch though. I can't pay you for lunch. I'll continue to pay you nothing. <laughs> I can't pay you nothing for lunch, Daniel. All right, that's 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 too much. The company just doesn't have it in the budget. I'm so sorry. I know it's may, maybe in 2021. Maybe in 2021, I'll be able to pay you. Nothing. Again. Again. <laughs> for, for your lunch breaks. Who are we kidding? He doesn't do shit as a moderator. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. So... That whole fucking debacle is, is done. And again, if this board explodes, 
uh, I'll be sending a bill to proton to go because I tried really hard to put it up on rubber standoffs. <laughs> now, if this board breaks up, breaks, um, it'll be really good feedback for the future because... Um, at that point, I will seriously talk to you guys about epoxying these boards. Um, I've had to do that. It's not that much work. Um, but, you know, this is a $90 camera and board. So if this board blows up, it's probably going to be like a $40 replacement. That's worth epoxying. So I almost hope that this board does fail on a big, huge slam so that we can have that discussion and I can do the, I'll, I'll epoxy one of these boards live on the stream. You know what I do find interesting though? They have epoxied some of these components down. I can see that they've got some epoxy surrounding some of these components. On the other side, there's a couple right in the middle of the board um, where you can you can see that they've epoxied them. So in theory, this will be totally fine, and they've already figured out what the hell keeps failing on these boards, and they've epoxied it down for us. If not, we will do it ourselves. Um, so this is this is going to be a really good uh, like test or whatever. Let me put a memory card in it right now, um, just in case... The, oh god, I almost fell down. Just in case the little setup that I've got going on here is like a pain in the ass for the memory cards. Um, I don't think it will be, but I've done this enough times to know to just do this now. And, yeah. So let's get that in there. And, come on, where's the click? Where's the click? Um, by the way, Proton to go. Thank you for the suggestions. I think this might be the way that it stays, and I hope. Um, but like I said, expect a PayPal invoice. <laughs> if this blows up, fair warning. <laughs> I give you fair warning. If you ignore the PayPal invoice, then, you know, I can't say I blame you. But if I can remember, I'll at least send it as a joke. <laughs> and then I'll try to remember to cancel it. <laughs> All right, so we got that. Man, look how tight that is. But it totally fits. It's, it's not contacting. And now that this is more solidly mounted, it's not totally solidly mounted. It's got a little tiny bit of give to it because of the rubber uh, O-rings. Um, but it doesn't have any give front to back, so it's not going to move back and slam into the ESC. Um, and yeah, there is, I know it's super hard to see, but there is clearance in there, clearance. Because the ESC is on uh, is on rubber, so the ESC will move, but I can see that it's not, um, it's not hitting. It doesn't have that much movement. So this should be totally fine. Let's get the receiver and the VTX and the... Um, uh, whatever the hell the other thing is. What's that called? Capacitor? Yeah, and the capacitor uh, set up here. And then we'll be done, pretty much. I'll, uh, I gotta do all the things in Betaflight, but that'll take me five minutes. And I will have a working rig again, and that'll be very exciting. Or, we'll plug this in, and it'll blow up. So, let's do that now. I think I've plugged this in once already, but... Let's plug it in with this guy hooked up to see if it catches on fire. That'll be a fun little exercise. Uh, TBS Smoke Stopper is the only one that has the XT30s and the XT60s. I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, <laughs> Daniel's going to go delete his channel. Um, this, uh, 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 yeah, just get this. I'm not a big fan of TBS. Uh, I have some issues with some of the things that Trappy's done in the past. Um, but this particular piece of theirs is great, and I think you should buy one. The question is, do I have a battery anywhere? I do! Ugh, here's one. All right. Place your bets. Fire, no fire. That's what you type in the chat. Type into the chat, fire or no fire. Um... Ah! No fire yet. Ooh. No fire yet. Hey, no fire. With the smoke stopper on it. Uh, but there's also no second set of beeps. Which could be because it's low voltage. Or it could be because... Oh, I know why it is. It's because the, uh, the motor 4 is on the LED pad. I have to reassign that resource. 
All right, so fire, no fire. Uh, looks like three no fires. We're going full voltage. We're good. Okay, we're good. I swore there was a little whiff of smoke, but there wasn't. Cool. All right, so in theory, it won't catch on fire any more than it just did. Let's see if anything's hot. Nah, seems all right. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Full speed, and then I'm going to end this stream and go sit on the couch and try to relax and uh, hope that the that my dark passenger doesn't come and fuck with me anymore. I hate Dexter. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it is the same as Dexter. Okay, get this out of the way, get this out of the way. I'm gonna move this over here. So I'm gonna do a little piece of VHB there just to give it a little bit of uh, front to back grip. And then I'm gonna drop a uh, zip tie in there Let's see how big of a zip tie I can get in there because the bigger zip ties definitely work better yes oh terrific okay so that zip tie should last a good long while the, the one step smaller than those really sucks uh, so what's the size that I've got to go on this that little bit there okay so that looks like about that and that so let's get that on there lately i've been using tweezers on the vhb just so i don't get my uh, hand oils all over it uh, all right. it also sometimes makes getting this backing off a little bit easier or impossible i have a hell of a time getting this backing off it won't burn twice that's true I think everything that needs to be plugged in is plugged in right now, too, so it, uh, oh my god, I hate this. Come on, just, just, just be cool. For once in your life, little red VHB backing, just be cool. I'm trying to do this, like, in front of people. You're making me look like an asshole. My hands are all shaking. Who knows a trick for this? Somebody has to have a trick for this. This can't be this hard for everyone without me having heard in the news that someone jumped out their window out of frustration trying to get the goddamn backing off this fucking VHB. This isn't even the real VHB. This is the scotch stuff that's supposedly almost as good, but not quite. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna scream. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna... Fair warning. Turn your headphones down, because if this keeps fighting me... Okay, we got it. Razor blade, yeah, I used to do it with a... Um... I used to do it with a uh, an X-Acto knife, but these these guys are so sharp that I've had better luck with them. These are like really really sharp on the tips. These little tweezers, like to the point where I gotta be careful because if I brush them up against my skin, they'll uh, dig in and try to eat me. <coughs> oh God, almost died. Okay, so receivers going on first. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm just going to stick it down. <clears throat> I'm not going to be a lunatic about it. The only thing I was thinking is I, I almost wanted to run these wires under in between the ESC and the flight controller, but I'm not in the mood. So I'm just going to leave them where they are. They're fine where they are. And so we're going to have that one piece coming around. Uh, it kind of depends on where this thing sits because I don't want to pull the... Okay. Um, so that's like maximum tightness so maximum tightness and then I'll back it off a little bit to give it a little bit of slack I will even um, give it a twist I'm gonna give it a twist single little twist 
just to keep these little fellas together a little bit better. Thing to remember is when you start twisting it, you lose wire length. I should have made these a little bit longer, but I forgot that I was gonna mount this uh, flight controller upside down. So maximum pull, and then we will back it off a little bit and stick it right there. All right. Okay. All right, so that should be fine. I do need to cut another little piece of this. I just realized to stick the VTX down. So um, again, there will be very little warning to when I explode and scream as loud as I can. So have your fingers on that volume knob. If you see me getting too frustrated, just turn it down. Because <laughs> there could be an explosion of Ciotti's big stupid mouth. All right, here we go again. Let's try this. Let's let's stick it on. No, I've tried that before. It's it's terrible. It's all bad. Let's go like this. And then I'll come at it like here. And then see if I can get it. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Nope. Okay. Okay. Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope, didn't get it. Nope. No joy. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. We might be okay here. There might not. You son of a bitch. Okay. Okay. Okay, come on. Yeah! All right. Don't. in here and hey look at that it's almost like I've cut these pieces specifically for this before maybe once or twice okay got a couple turns keeping these guys together here on the VTX let's make sure that that oh look it's popping off the VHB already great thanks so much that is a mighty small piece of VHB on the bottom there though but what's nice is its job is to not hold it down. Its job is to just make it um, not slide front or back. So there we go. There's our little communications package. We're gonna run this. Uh, we're gonna run this zip tie around. And so I'm gonna keep this part of the zip tie here because I don't want to really crank down super hard on this um, on this uh, UFL <clears throat> antenna wire. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. All right, so I'm gonna go up through here. Uh, I think I am gonna hold these guys down. So, yeah, I do wanna hold these guys down because then it'll sit really nicely up on that standoff like that. So let's get this under there, bring this across. And so our one zip tie is gonna do a whole bunch of things at once. And let me show you guys that. So, by keeping the by keeping this side up here, I'm going to use this little gap for this. I don't want to pull down super hard on this UFL because you can break the connection in here, uh, in there. So I'm just going to use this as a little gappy jobber, jib jab, flippity flab. Um, also make sure that you don't have a big bubble of, uh, of, uh, who's he, what's it down here? <laughs> of, um... Ah, eh, shit on his pancake. Uh, zip tie down here. So push push this zip tie flat here so it's straight across so that you get the, the gap out of it. And then just whenever you're dealing with these UFLs, just be gentle. Just like one or two little clickies at a time. Just clicky, clicky. And then we don't really need this, since we have the VHB, we don't really need this to pull down hard. We just need to make sure it doesn't shoot up and off of here. So just like one little click at a time. All right, we got one more click there. Let's see where it's at. It's holding it pretty good. We don't have a big gap under here. Um, I think I can probably pull one more click on this. One more. All right. Also check that the uh, that the the zip tie is not going to move front and back too much. I think I do want one more little click here. There we go. Okay, so I think that's probably about it. So 
we've got our little gap created by this corner sitting perfectly on the UFL. So it's not pulling down on the UFL super hard. It's pulling down on this side of the VTX, which it looks like is fine. There's no big component that it's putting a bunch of stress on. Um, and then it's also holding, uh, it's holding the, um, the wires for the, the capacitor down just to keep that night neat and tidy. It's going to be roughly around here somewhere. Um, so that should be fine. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to push it backwards a little bit here, which should be all right. And then, I don't know, I might actually click this zip tie one more time. Yeah, I got one more click because I can see that it's barely even touching this. So let's just go one more. And uh, you know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to pull this down a little bit. So let's just scooch this this way, the zip tie. There we go. And I might have gone a little too far. Yeah, that's exactly where I want it right there. This is actually more important than you guys would think. Um, I have destroyed components by putting these zip, zip ties on too tight. I've also destroyed stuff by putting them on too loose uh, and having them move around when I don't want them to uh, or having the components move around. So pay attention when you're doing this. Um, I know that kind of seems crazy, but just take my word for it. Um, yeah, these little things make a big difference when you start smashing these things into stuff at seven zillion miles an hour. And so there we go. We got our little receiver antennas kind of tucked under there real nice. And then the zip tie is nice and flat there on the back. And we got our little communications package. Receiver VTX on and one nice little flip flop and the flip flap. Um, I could run another one maybe up here, but let's see how this does. Let, let's see how this does by itself. Eh, nah, you know what? I'll run a weak one up there. I'll run a tiny little weak guy up there. The little minuscule ones. But this is the one that's going to take most of the uh, most of the abuse. Um, can't help to add a little a second little one in here though. Just for the front. Uh, I would not recommend using these tiny little um, these tiny little zip ties by themselves though because they absolutely will break and your VTX and receiver will go fucking flying. Um, the only other thing I have to be careful of is to not hit this and hold down this button, but we should be alright with that. So let's just add this one just as a... I won't even really tighten this one. This is just like a what if. Oops, put that a little too far down. Come on. Come back, little jerk. Okay, there it is. And yeah, I'm just gonna by hand give this a little bit of a tighten. And then that's it. And then this antenna is gonna be zip tied to one of these standoffs, which I'll show you sooner than later. Because I think we can just put those side plates on now. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's nice and loose, um, but that's totally fine. Let's clip the ends. And try not to clip any wires while you're doing that. All right, so there we go. That's it. Everything is somewhat in place. This guy comes on. And so here's the way it's going to work. There's going to be a zip tie here that holds this antenna up, that runs right up there. And then there's going to be two more zip ties to hold these um, receiver antennas, one straight up and one towards the back to give us an L. So the, um, the little axial will be at a 45 degree, one of these will be straight up, and then one of these will be straight back. That gives you essentially the maximum amount of um, uh, separation between the receiver the, the active bits of the receiver antennas and the active bit of the 5.8 antenna. So, okay, now we just put it together, I guess, right? Um, yeah, well, shit, okay. Didn't think this day would ever come, but it appears to have arrived. That was a horrible sound. Uh, let's get some screws to mount the Runcam Hybrid, and then we'll get that um, 
we'll get that capacitor all mounted up nice and hell maybe we'll go fly no we won't go fly because it's raining it's disgusting out but we'll we'll at least have something ready to to go destroy oh no wait wait i gotta do all the uh, the beta flight stuff yeah, yeah 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 okay okay so it looks like this is set up for the bottom hole so let's use that and this is going to be way too long i can tell already and i think this was a six let's go all the way down to and nah, let's go down to a five m2 by five is probably the right one for this because uh, i think the side plates are two mil and then hopefully there's three mil of uh yeah, maybe not no, there's definitely not. I gotta go all the way down to an M2 by four. Look at that. <laughs> Hopefully, an M2 by four is short enough, because I would prefer to not have to use a spacer. Wow, even an M2 by four. Man, these are really shallow. Those the threads in there are unbelievably shallow. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, well, I almost can't believe that. Let me try it again. No, it is too long. Okay, so I guess we're using spacers. Let's get... Um, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a little rubber spacer because that'll compress and that'll kind of be nice. So let's grab our little M2 rubber washer bastards here. We'll put one on there. I doubt you guys can see any of this. I cannot do it the other way. I just, you guys just have to bear with me for a minute while I do this. This is the best view I can give you which is not a view at all but just take my word for it I'm screwing into the camera I'll talk you guys through it it'll be thrilling and other words words are hard all right so there we go with that and that seems to have given it just enough where it's now somewhat okay. Get these out of the way before I smash them and have my shit fly everywhere. Uh, I do need another M2 by four. Ugh. Here we go. Okay. If I put them on the outside, they would just uh, squish and explode. They would just squish out from the head of the screw. I've been down that road. It's it's a frustrating road. Uh, I also need to manage these, the cable off of this run cam hybrid a little bit better to make sure it doesn't try to escape, essentially. Um, but I can do that later. Yeah, that'll be fine. So I probably just took care of it. Uh, okay, what else do I need to do? A uh, capacitor and the other side plate and some things on here. Let's get this routed the way it needs to be routed real quick. And well, screw it. Let's do the other let's do the other side plate. Um Yeah, I think we're in a good nah, let me uh let me Take a second, and uh, I'll mount this. Uh, I'll mount this capacitor. So it's probably only going to need this little piece, which is immensely satisfying. And let's see where this is going to go. I'm thinking right there. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it's a perfect spot for it, right there. So let's get the. Oh my God! I got to deal with this backing paper again. <laughs> Uh, will this frame fit the DJI Air unit? I can pretty much guarantee that it will not, uh, just in knowing how big the Air unit is. Uh, it'll probably fit the Caddx, though. The Caddx thing will probably drop right in the back here. Uh, you're going to want a small ESC, though. 
So don't get this Akon AK32 35 amp 20 by 20 ESC. I can all but guarantee this won't work. Uh, I'm in a hurry now, so I'm not going to use two pairs of tweezers. I'm just going to use my greasy ass fingers. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot imagine a world where the air unit would fit in here unless you did something really wacky like run the, the, the ESC and the VTX. Uh, I'm sorry, the ESC and the um, flight controller up front or in the rear or something crazy like that. Uh, do this. Jump onto the... Uh, let's see how many times I can drop this before I completely lose my mind. Uh, do this. Go to the Acrobrat Facebook group and ask in there because if anybody's done it they'll be in that facebook group uh but don't get your hopes up because i don't think it'll fit but the caddix vista i think it's called uh i think you will be able to get that to fit hey there we go okay so uh oh i know why i'm shaking because i'm hungry okay yeah that makes sense no, I'm good. I'm almost done. Uh, as a as a skinny fella with a crazy metabolism, um, if I don't eat for a few hours, I will start to shake. And that's what this shake is, I think. Which is fine, because I hung in there. And I think we're going to have this goddamn thing done in a few. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I'm trying to give myself a little space here. Oh, you guys can't see shit. Sorry. I'm trying to give myself a little space. <laughs> Won't work. <laughs> now, you guys don't don't feel bad about me not eating. It's it's my own insanity. I, I, I just forget. I, I get very involved in. I get very hyper focused. It's one of the issues with bipolar. To, um, I get hyper focused I, and I, I forget to eat. It has nothing to do with you guys. Uh, let's get a zip tie on here. Let's use a black one because those are the strong ones that I've got. Let's get this going like that. And we'll get a nice big zip tie on this big fat 330 capacitor. Tongue planted firmly in cheek. This is not a big fat capacitor is a little guy but this is all we need this is probably more than we need so there we go look at that look at that little spot for the uh for the capacitor this is what i did on the v1 forever and it worked really really well um here's a little trick if you can't quite get the 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 majimba on these guys um put your pliers like that and twist the the grab it with the thick part of the plier and then just twist, and you can sometimes get like one more click out of it. See it pulling it through from just the twist? And that'll make sure it's nice and tight. Chop it, chop it, chop it. The only problem with doing this is it makes it a pain in the ass to take apart because you've now tied this uh, side plate right to the, essentially to the ESC. It's not the end of the world. You can just break the zip tie. Or cut the zip tie, but um, just food for thought. So we got our antennas here. I'm not going to mount the antennas, I don't think. Um, I am going to... Nah, fuck it. I'll do it. It's fine. It'll be fine. I won't die. Uh, Alright, let's get that on there. Let's get this on here. <sighs> Oh, really, Big Willie? Hey, uh, Big Willie, have you talked about that at all in the um, FPV therapy group? Um, if not, please do. Because I didn't actually realize... Uh, I, I just thought I had depression. Um, I never really... I never realized that, it, that, that the swings were a sign of something else. Um, and I also didn't realize what being manic was. I thought that when I was manic, um, that was the real me, basically. Um, and it was very frustrating because I would always, like, the, the manic periods never last, as I'm sure you know. Uh, eh, farts. Uh, so yeah, the manic periods never last, and so that would make me feel like 
I don't know. It, that I feel like I would need to get back to that, and I couldn't. And then when when the manic period would go away, it always felt horrible, um, like a big letdown. And yeah, just finding out that I most likely, and I'll have more of a confirmation on this soon, um, but finding out, diagnosing mental health problems, in my opinion, is more than half the battle, uh, because we don't talk about them, and there's a lot of misunderstanding about them, case in point, the story that I'm telling right now. So, yeah, it's... Um, just knowing what you have allows you to look it up and that makes a big difference. Ugh, come on, man. Oh no, I'm doing this in the wrong order. Oh my God, I hate putting things onto the inside of screws. It's so annoying, but it works so well. <laughs> All right, buddy, stay, just stay. Just stay right there. Don't fall off. Don't fall off. Oh, I would love that, honey. Oh, oh, oh. I think I got it. I think I got it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get in there. Get in there. Get it, 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 get it. Come on. Get. Go. Go. Find your hole. Find the hole. Oh, my God. Are you too good for your home? Get in there. Come on. Oh, come on. Where's the hole? Guys, I can't find the hole. Uh, can't find the hole. I think I got it. Nope. It's not the hole. Where's the hole? There it is. There it is. I can feel it. Yay! All right. Found the hole. Uh, yeah, I, I can't talk intelligently anymore. I, my brain is, uh, is starved for... Sugar. Not sugar. Things other than sugar. Man, that thing is set back. Oh, it's because I have it on the... Uh... Oh, it's so nice to be able to use the slots again. I was never able to use the slots on my V1 because I was using the dual camera setup. And yeah, this is really nice. Okay, so it looks like moving it all the way forward is the jam. Okay, so all the way forward and then let's give these a little tighten. Right, that should be good. Oh, nice, Big Willie. Uh, yeah, big old upswing and big old dives. Puffy, how did that work? Um, th these, the the camera is nineteen wide, and the, uh, and the standoffs are twenty. So, yeah, did did spacers come with the package? I didn't even notice. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's got enough. That's got enough retention where I don't think it'll slide in a hard crash. But if it does move in a hard crash, where is it going to go? It's going to go down, and it's not really going to break anything. So that's good. Um, I'm going to revisit this, but not right now. Um, right now I'm just going to keep going. Uh... So I do have washes in there. I, I have little rubber grommets, which should be taking up. I can't imagine, I, I imagine that the rubber bastards that I put in there should be still at least a half a mil thick each, which will take up that one millimeter gap. So in theory, I'm okay. Um, did the kit come with half mil spacers? Whatever. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to keep going. Um, this is fine. This is fine. Man, look at that. Ah, I forgot to put the, the nuts on the top of that. Is this put together enough for me to just stop? Uh, could I stop, guys? Or do you want me to see, see me finish this? Oh, I'm going to finish it. Let's just finish it. Let's just finish it. We're going to just finish it. Let's finish it. Guys, we're just going to finish it. 
Okay. Kristen says we need 15 minutes before food is ready anyway. Um, I'm not going to be able to get these nuts on, though. That That's going to be what's happening here. And I'm going to just lose it. Because I'm going to have to take that side plate off again. So... Maybe... And I just farted, and it really stinks. It it's it was a it was a good one, guys. Um, oh my God! Why does everything have to get in the way of everything else with every single micro ever built? Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> Puffy, what's the deal with the with the with the washers? What do I have to do? Oh. oh my god. This is just Don't tell me what to do, Techno. Don't be a naysayer. I need I need positivity. I need you guys to say, no, you can do it. You can do it. Don't tell me to not do it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That, tomato, that homemade tomato sauce feels so good. I can see the carbon bending in now. Um, Puffy, did it break? <laughs> Every single time, ESK, every single time, every single, or no, it's it's EBR. Every single micro build goes the same way. Um, it gets a little bit better on like, so like my little three inch setup um, that maybe in a hundred years I'll have a frame for. Um, those go a little bit smoother, but it's only because I've done them a whole bunch of times in a row. Oh. All right. I'm just going to imagine that somebody said keep going. I think somebody might have said keep going. I'm just going to imagine it. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm also, I'm realizing that, I, like, I have to set the, the, man, how many streams is, can we possibly go? Oh my god! Ooh. Just the camera bolt and washer better than noticing after side completely bolted on. I know. I know, 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 I know. We can do it. It's it's gonna be fine. If one more fucking thing happens though, I'm out. If one more thing happens, I'm done. That's it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it right now. If one more thing fucks with me, then we're going to go to another stream to finish this. Because it's... Yeah. There's there's increasingly the chance of a complete implosion on my part. And... I haven't totally freaked out in a while. I've had smaller freakouts recently. But I haven't, like, completely lost it in a while. So... God damn it. God damn you. Oh, micros. Why do I have to be the micro king? Why can't I be the five inch king? You fuck. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just, just use your nut grabber and just breathe. Don't betray me, nut grabber. I will fucking smash you. Oh, great. Now my nut grabber is falling apart. Thank God for this nut grabber. I can't imagine having to grab my nuts with my bare hands anymore. It was a dark period when I had to do that. Not really, but I just thought it might be a funny thing to say. Um, all right, let's get the welder out. Don't trust these to not back out on their own. They 100% will. 
Um, maybe not right away, but eventually they will. Where's the... Where's the goddamn welder? There it is. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Uh, it's in the, uh, the description. Scroll down in the description and uh, get you a nut grabber. You, you absolutely need a nut grabber if you're going to work on... Um... <laughs> nice, Daniel. If you need a... Um... I don't know. If you need to work on micros, if you need to not just... You know what I mean? Uh, let me also check that I don't have these too tight. And I do. And I do. All right. Easy does it. Easy does it. Nice and, nice and loose. Just how I like my women. <gasps> You'll notice I didn't say that one loudly. That was not by accident. Nor does it have anything to do with reality. It's just a funny joke. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> oh, boy. It is just... It is chaos time. Okay, now it's moving. Fine. Close enough. No, that one's still too tight. Nut grabbers, where are you? Grab my nuts. There we go. That's better. That's better. If, if it can, like... If it can kind of still spin both ways a little bit, um, that's usually where I like to have them. Um, yeah. Because that means they're not over-compressing the, uh, the rubber gummies! <sighs> the rubber grommets! Alright, little little dab of welder on top. Welder! I'm just not going to explain anything that I'm doing anymore. And if you guys have questions, you can ask. And I'll probably not see the question. And then it'll go unanswered. And like a month from now, you'll remember the question again. You'll ask me on a live stream. And maybe I'll read it at that point And give you the answer. But there you go. Try not to get welder all over everything. Uh, one mat, one mil plastic spacers for the cam. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm gonna keep using these rubber bastards because I'm curious. But uh, if I get into a hard wreck and the camera rotates, I am going to switch over to. Wait a second. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Um. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We're definitely forgetting something. I'm going to blame you guys for not calling it out. Uh, Puffy didn't use the spacers. He just pulled the carbon in. Alright, so I guess I'll land somewhere in between where I'm I'm using the these little rubber washer guys, which in theory are compressing, but are only compressing to about a half a millimeter, which will take up the exact gap between the 19 mil wide camera and the 20 mil wide plates. How you like me now? All right, let's go through this exercise again here. See if I can go crazy this time. Get Oh, wow. No way. No way that that just worked. Nope. The rubber thing didn't come off, though. We're still good. All right, let me put the rear one on. And, all right, let's try to find our hole. Oh, I think I just found it. Nope, of course not. Oh! <gasps> was that it? That was it! Wow! I got a thousand times easier that time. All right. I'm going to move it back ever so slightly. And... Crank this one. All right, so that one's jacked down. I'm gonna loosen this one and move it back just a little bit. And yeah, it should be enough. That's it. That's it. Right there. Right there. Yes. 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 Okay. It's six. Uh, that one's cranked now too. So 
there's like a good amount of tension on this, but it's not like an infinite, like if I really push on it hard. So there, there's definitely a chance that this is going to rotate on the first hard slam that it takes. Um, but I will risk it. Because um, it doesn't look like it'll break the camera or anything else when that happens. Um, so it's worth the risk. Um, oh, and this had a little bit more tightening that I could have done. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, that's nice and solid. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. We'll see. Should be okay. Hopefully it'll be okay. I hope it doesn't blow up. Um, fancy purple screws to match the purple standoffs. And this will also pull the side plate into the, um, into the TPU or it'll push it right out the front. That was weird. What the hell's going on there? What? What's happening? Why are you so far forward? What the hell's going on? That's weird. That was strange, but it's all better now. Okay, just fall off. Do that. Ah, there it is. Okay, that was odd. Ugh, get in there. All right. All right. Wait, what, 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 why is that fucking in like that? Well, I guess it's not. I guess it's just my imagination. Um, why is this tightening so much? What, what's, what's the deal here? Did that TPU not get pushed onto the, uh, onto the thing? I'm using these little, uh, these little hexagonal uh, standoffs that I got from Ready-Made RC. Mm -hmm. I do like them. They're a little bit bigger, uh, which is kind of cool. So, like, if you put, like, a TPU loop over them, they'll uh, they'll hold their shape a little bit better, which I kind of... Well, no, they'll, they'll hold on to the, to the standoff a little bit better, is what I meant to say. Um, but in this case... What the hell's going on? Oh, there it goes. Okay, it just wasn't, uh, the TPU wasn't quite around the standoff, and I, I smushed it a little bit. That was weird, but all's well that ends well. Right? Let's see. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And I appear to have done the same thing on the other side, so let's fix that side. I cranked this screw down without this TPU being fully on the standoff, and it, uh, it just kind of oozed it out a little bit. So let's... Just make sure this is pushed on here. That's better. So now we're not trapping the TPU in between the side plate and the standoff. Now we can move that back over. That's better. All right. Make sure that we don't do the same thing on the top. Now we're good on the top. Okay. Look at this little thing coming together. Is the camera upside down? Oh, uh, camera's upside down to get the HD lens up on top um, to get less or hopefully no prop in view. Uh, that was an issue, although it looks like Tommy pushed the nose forward on this one. That was a problem I had on the V1, um, was getting props out of view. So I just instinctively did it on this one. But yeah, it looks like he pushed the nose out a little bit. So I might be able to get away with having it on the bottom, but whatever. It's not, it's not worth finding out the hard way, so I'll just leave it on the top where it is. All right, more screws to crank down so that when I do f remember the thing that I forgot to do in here, it'll take me even more time and piss me off even more uh, to pull this thing apart. So let's do that. And a couple more here. Um... In theory, I should run the zip ties to show you how I, I mount these antennas, but there's a chance that I just don't have the patience right now, so I might bail on that, but I know I shouldn't. So we'll see. 
I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Grabbing the zip ties. Once I have the zip ties, I won't be able to bail. I need to find some more purple zip ties. That's what I really need. That's what's really important right now is me to find more purple zip ties. Um, race day quads used to sell these purple ones, and I really liked them because they're a little gummy, like and and they so they wouldn't uh, break as easily. They would stretch a little bit before they broke, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, I need to find find another source for purple zip ties. I'm sure if I type purple zip tie into Amazon, it'll find 7,000 examples for them. And I do need to put a uh, put an Amazon order in, so I should just do that. But here's how I run this. Uh, this piece here, so that it's, it's close to that guy. Um, it'll make sense in a second. And I just run this up like that. Pretty much never comes out the opening so just tweeze it and zippity doo dot -da down don't get the receiver antennas up in there and all right here we go so this guy's gonna go here the biggest problem I have with this one and the other reason I like these um, hexagonal standoffs is they tend to find a flat spot with these a little bit easier um, and this is also where I do the trick with the um, uh, to get this tight enough so it doesn't want to rotate all over the place is what I'm getting at here so this is where I do the trick with the pliers I grab it down here and just twist the pliers on it and that'll usually get you one or two more little um, clickies on the zip tie sometimes not all the times so there it goes there was one Ugh, nope can't get that second one but this will probably be pretty good here. The only problem is, see, it left that little crease. Gotta get that out. Oh, this is nice. This really grabbed onto one of these, um, one of the flat spots here. So this is good. This won't rotate around easily. Um, so then I'm just going to cut this and zip this guy right to it. And it'll just kind of hold it there real nice. Uh, the, the other option that I previously had set up is um, you shrink wrap this thing down, which works really well. But the pain in the ass there is you got to fit the shrink wrap over the head of this thing, and then it might not shrink down enough, uh, which becomes very annoying. Let me try it though. Maybe I have a little short piece of uh, shrink wrap that's that's big enough. Oh, there's, <gasps> there's food! All right, we're gonna give this a very very quick attempt, and then I am out. I love you guys and all, but. I love food more than you. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, in my mental order of things that I love, you guys are after food. I know it sucks. I know that's hard to hear. But, uh, you know, some things in life are just disappointing. <laughs> uh... This build can eat me. Anybody still in here? You guys still hanging out? Or have I just gone completely off the deep end and lost everyone? Alright, let's see if this guy will fit. How many people were here for the debacle of trying to fit um, shrink wrap over this antenna in the V1 build a couple weeks ago? How many people remember that? Oh, Big Willie's here. Still wondering why the camera's upside down. <laughs> no, it won't fit. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for not fitting, you jerk. Let's see if I can just get this one down here. Stretch this thing out. Stretch. I heard when you put on the the shrink wrap on before you connect the camera to the VTX, it'll be so, yeah, yeah, that's true. But try to remember that when you're streaming. It's impossible. Actually, there was a reason that I didn't do that. Oh, there wasn't enough space. Maybe there there was a reason that I didn't do that. I I usually try to do that, but. 
Sometimes it's hard. Usually I can just stretch the, uh, the shrink wrap real nice and get it on over, but this one, I, I, the, I need a, um, I need a bigger pair of pliers and a better way of stretching it. Let's see. I used to stretch it with two screwdrivers. I'm going to do this off camera so that if it breaks and I punch myself in the face, you guys can't make fun of me. But let's see. So I just take, oh yeah, there we go. Okay. That's the meal ticket right there. So that is now definitely stretched big enough. And I am just going to put this one down over the, um, the base of the zip tie here because it's not really long enough. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put this over the base, hit it with a little bit of heat, see if it shrinks up enough. It might not even shrink up enough. That's the other uh, unknown, the other super unknown. Uh, I'm going to use a torch for this. All right, I'm back. Let's torch this fucker. Play with some fire. Oh my god, that's a big torch. Easy torch, easy. Oh god, oh wow. Look at it go, look at it go. Look at it go, guys, look at it go. Look at it go. Woo! It's shrinking. It's shrinking. Let's try the other side. See how it might not shrink up enough? It's okay. It's not the end of the world, but... Um, let's see. Let's see if it goes enough. Come on, keep going. Keep going, friend. Come on. I have faith. Yeah! Well, that's better than nothing. That's not bad. Um, it'll also give the base of the... Uh, the base of the... I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just make it up. You, whatever whatever you think I should have said there, that's, that's, that's what I should have said. Um, so yeah, that's where that's going to sit. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be fantastic. You guys are awesome for hanging in, but I'm done. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to put words together in, in proper sentences. So I'm just going to put two more zip ties, put these guys up on the other little zip ties, and that'll be it. That's the Acrobat Duo build. There it is. It's all done. All right, goodbye. <laughs> I'll do the, um... I'll do the, uh, the the setup tomorrow night's stream. Come back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we'll do uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, as always. Uh, and we'll finish this, and we'll do some other repairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's my workbench. He's got eyes. Here's my hands. You guys rule. This means peace. Uh, this means something else. Goodbye. <laughs> Ah! Uh.